Hey, everybody, what's up? It is a Thursday afternoon here on Kaplan and Crew. Give me a minute to uh, just mention our sponsors, as I always ask you to support them. Seven Mile Casino, that is the name of the studio. If you are looking for fun, table games, blackjack, poker, uh, this is the place to go. I had so much fun a few weeks ago when I went to a poker tournament, and I know I've been talking to the Seven Mile Casino people about doing a poker tournament at Seven Mile. Um, as we're heading towards normalcy in life, uh, it's coming. It is coming. Seven Mile Casino, just minutes from downtown San Diego. And if you're playing table games, I'd ask you to support our sponsors, and that's the place to go, Seven Mile Casino. Hey, right behind me, Mountain Trust Mortgage and Realty Services. Mountain Trust Mortgage and Realty Services. Gosh, I got to get a new a new like slide because it's just the red. Just You can't see it as well as the other ones. Nonetheless, here's the thing. These guys are helping Alex and his fiance so much. We are headed towards home ownership for these guys. I'm so excited about it. And they're playing the game. They're putting in offers. Uh, we talked yesterday about putting in an offer for a place down in Otai. And then the, the guy took another offer. And even Alex had offered 10% more than what they were even asking. It's a tough game out there. But you got to have a professional on your side who's patient and understanding and knows the, the details and can help you out. That's Gary Cooper, Mountain Trust Mortgage and Realty Services, 858-376-1299. Coop's been with us for nearly 20 years nearly 20 years. You got issues in real estate, trying to buy, sell, refinance, position yourself. He's our go-to guy. Corky's Pest Control. Um, listen, you're going to buy that house and then you got to protect that house. And you got to make sure you don't have things like termites in that house. And if you do, Corky's got that four-year guarantee. Nobody beats it. You have pest control problems. You call Corky's Pest Control, 1-800-901-1102. Total T Clinic, I, I cannot say enough. I, I, I had a breakfast early this morning with a longtime great friend, and he was saying to me, thanks for turning me on to testosterone. I've been going to the Total T Clinic. I feel like a million bucks. He's 55 years old. He's looking good and fit, and uh, he's single, so he's out there slaying. And, uh, and he credits the Total T Clinic. as he, His phrase today was, I'll never go to battle again without it. So guys, I'm telling you, you're feeling slow, tired, sluggish, weak, unmotivated in the bedroom. Testosterone could be an issue. Go to the Total T Clinic. It'll take 15 minutes. You're in, you're out, and it's free to get your testosterone levels checked. And lastly, let me mention Tory Holistics. Um, if you like weed, and it seems like so many of you do because everybody's using our promo code, Kaplan2021, it saves you 20%. So if you're ordering online, I know a lot of people prefer it to be delivered. If you like to go into the store, you can use the promo code there. Just go to our website, kaplanandcrew.com. You can click on it. You'll find it. And, uh, and you can show it to them in the store. You can put it in as a promo code on, online. Uh, nonetheless, it's 20% savings, and it's pretty significant. Kaplan2021 is the promo code. Tory Holistics is your, and it's our, cannabis store. So listen, support our sponsors. We appreciate it always. And let's start the show. Hey, great friends. What is happening on a Thursday afternoon? It is Kaplan and crew with Grande and the Brown Man, and we're just taken to the airwaves. Happy to have everybody along. If you're a 1090 listener, you're in your car. We heard you loud and clear a long time ago. It's like, dude, I know you guys are, are on and you guys are podcasting and you're on YouTube and you're on all these audio podcast platforms. I'm an old school guy. I just get in my car. I want to turn on the radio. Well, we've made it easy for you. You get in your car, you turn on 1090. That's the radio station that you've always known us to be on. That's where we are. So 1090 listeners, happy to have you guys along. If you are a YouTube viewer, make sure you're involved in our YouTube chat. Shout out to all the YouTube chatters, Joe and Neil and, uh, and so many others who I'm, I'm not mentioning by name because you know I'm like trying to think off the top of my head and they're not coming to me, but you guys know who you are out there and I'll be in that YouTube chat. We'll be talking all afternoon. So happy to have everybody with us on YouTube. Hey, tonight on television, we will be on TV from 7 to 8 p.m. on the Your View Network. It's Cox. It's Channel 4 San Diego. If you're listening up the coast, it's Channel 4 Santa Barbara. And if you're in Orange County or Palos Verdes, it's Channel 118. So 
It's like a million homes in Southern California. And it's like every day, one more person tells me they were flipping channels and they happen to find the show. So happy to have everybody who will join us on TV. And again, audio podcasters, you may be catching up at a different time, a different day. We're happy to have everybody here. So along with Grande and the Brown Man from the Seven Mile Casino Studios, we are back on the air on Thursday. You know, my first thought today is, um, I was kind of already turned off a little bit by the Olympics this summer. And I say it that way because here we had this great American runner who was like headed towards a potential gold medal at the Olympics in Tokyo this summer. And they kick her out over cannabis, which to me is just the most ridiculous, archaic, old school thought process. You know, we, we've all talked about our friends at Tory Holistics and changing perceptions and what it was back in the old days versus what it is today. Do you know that that last week when I lost my voice, I was at the ear, nose and throat doctor. And I actually said to the doc, I said, listen, I just have to be honest with you, doc. You know, I would vape, you know, I don't like to smoke. I don't like smell. I don't like, you know, I don't like all the smoke in my lungs, but I would like to vape. And the doctor actually said to me, she goes, here's what I would say to you. Just do edibles. And, and this is the doctor. She's like, listen, it's legal. Why are we pretending like it doesn't exist? This is California. It's legal. Just if you like it, use edibles. It's it's the same thing with the Olympics. Like I'm so turned off that, that one of our great athletes would be knocked out of the Olympic games over using cannabis. But now the story of the Olympics being without fans, you know, listen, Last year, the NBA bubble, I lived through it. We, 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 we needed sports. We wanted sports. We took them any way we could, but we're back. I mean, I watched this NBA finals in Phoenix. People are going berserk. I was at the Padre game the other night. There were 40,000 people there. Um, it's great to have crowds back in that energy, whether you're in the arena or you're watching on television and to not have crowds at the Olympics. Like it, it just, my perception before the Olympics even start is, wow, this is going to be dreary and quiet and kind of boring, but I, I mean, listen, I'm, I'm, I get turned off by these kinds of stories. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll find myself watching the Olympic games every night going, it doesn't matter. doesn't really matter. I'm watching the competition. It's got nothing to do with the crowd, but I'll tell you as a TV viewer, I definitely feel a different vibe when there's the big crowd and everybody's into it versus the no crowd, boring, quiet, dark, etc. So I'm definitely something I want to talk about as the afternoon goes on. We'll get there. But let me say hello. Good afternoon to mi hermano numero uno, Grande Alejandro. He's repping the 805. Oxnard, California's favorite son. And Ventura County in La Casa. Grande, hola. Hola. Um, what are we waiting for? It's time to, to send Chris Paddock down. Let's just get straight to it today. What are we waiting for? I mean, how much more do you need to see from the guy to realize that he's not a starting pitcher in the in Major League Baseball right now? Doesn't have the mental toughness. He can't throw, and when he throws a strike, like they just bomb it off him. What what are we waiting for here? Honestly, Is, can anybody tell me what we're waiting for? How much more do you need to see from the guy? You took the nickname away. It helped for a little bit, but now it's like that doesn't that doesn't matter. It's time to go. That's my first thought, Scott. Like, it's time to find something else. Like, there's no one in AAA right now. There's not a single player in AAA right now that can give up nine runs in two <laughs> innings. <laughs> I could do that. Yeah. So that's all I'm well, saying. Yeah, I mean, if I could get the ball over the plate. Oh, I could I mean, easily do that. I'm Listen, it ain't coming fast, but I'll get it over the plate. Yeah. Every single time, I'll get it over the plate. Really? And I can give up a three-run home run to Juan Soto any day. Mm -hmm. That is a yeah. fact. Yeah. Yeah, this is this was a this was a really bad start to this, you know, this homestand. Um to have Washington come in and to have them bomb away on the Padres the way they have, uh especially as we've talked over the last couple of days with the Giants having dropped a couple, the Dodgers really struggling in Miami right now. I mean, this was a great opportunity to make up some ground and man, Chris Paddock Last night I was watching a little bit of that game. I was like, wait a second. What? Is it 10 nothing? Really? Damn. You know what we should do? Mm. We've seen this before, like in other places where a player gets traded 
to the team that they're currently playing. So he goes from one dugout to the other dugout, and it's super weird, and and it's a funny video. Max Scherzer pitches tonight. We should not let him leave San Diego. Just I don't know what if this is even possible, but AJ Preller, work your magic, Rockstar GM. Don't let him leave San Diego after tonight. Actually, you know, it would be another great idea is also to trade Chris Paddock to whoever the Padres are going to play. And then this way, Chris Paddock can come and pitch batting practice to the Padres. Although, as we know, oftentimes guys leave the Padres and then do really well against the Padres. So I like your idea, Alex. I like your idea. I mean, Chris Paddock, it, it, it was a fun experiment when the Padres weren't good, when there was no Manny Machado and there was no Fernando Tatis and there were no playoff expectations and they had no personalities, the sheriff and his Gronkowski type brothers. It was a good fun story to try and promote, but the Padres used Kevin AC to make up this character. And this thing is a disaster. And, and by the way, it always goes back to what Browner talks about with Mackenzie Gore. Like, Really? Like Mackenzie Gore, your number one pitching prospect, can't give you more right now than than Chris Paddock? Mm, good start, Alex. Good start. Way to come out of the shoot. Better than Paddock's you start. Yeah, your start to the show today is better than Paddock's start for the Padres last night. You're right on. All right, everybody. Here he is. Six foot, seven inches tall. Twisted steel. Sex appeal. Big sacks. Big max. A hot take machine and a man known internationally to the ladies as the Brown Saw. He's bringing the street cred from what was the Seven Mile Casino Podcast Shed. But, I mean, behind the scenes here, people, he's really in Alex's kitchen. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Alex, is, Alex is in his, his, uh, his office, and Browner is in the same apartment, but in the dining room area, and I'll explain why that is in a minute. Here he is from the south side of Chicago. JB, Big Brown, the Brown Man, John Browner, in the dining room. Brown? Hit list. Right to it. Black folks, we need to talk. All of us. We need to get in the room. On the hit list? Am I putting black folks on the hit list? Black folks. F-O-L-K-S. Black folks. Yes, I know how to spell folks. I'm just, you know. I didn't know there was different. another way of spelling it, like F-O-X-E. Listen, I, I just want to make sure we're clear. I don't want to get it mixed yeah. up. I don't want the message okay. to get lost. Don't get it twisted. No, 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 not twisted at all, unless it's a braid. Listen, we got to have a conversation about what's going on with the Olympics, okay? Oh. We're not going to boycott because Shakira Richardson can't run. We're not doing that. We're, just, we're not going to do that, okay? One person broke a rule. She knew it was a rule. I get all the, the circumstances surrounding that, but guess what? There are hundreds of other black athletes participating in the Olympics. Let's not desert them because one. Let's not desert the entire black delegation of Olympic runners, lifters, and participants. Don't forget about swimmers, by the way. Remember swimmers. The swimmer you know, and the, the whole, swim cap there's, thing. There, there's the cap controversy they'll, now, too. You know? But they'll still be able to swim. Mm -hmm. They'll still be able to swim. I get that the cap was made for black women, made by a black company. I get that. I understand all that, but they're still going to participate. So if you want to plan your watch list around black athletes competing at certain times, do that. But don't boycott the entire thing because one person can't run because of weed. Because I think there's more to come out about that story. I don't know if she's done anything else other than the weed, but for her to just now not be running at all is not a reason for us to completely desert every other black athlete participating in the Olympics. Period. Period. Is that something that's talked about? I mean, I mean, I know that usually the hit list jumps in like 95% into the story, and then mm -hmm. the rest of us have to start asking questions and peeling back the layers. Right. Is that, Browner, literally, is that being talked about? That uh, um, Amongst black celebrities and people of influence on social media, they're saying, oh, let's boycott the, the Olympics. Let's show them that they need us more than we need them. It's like, look, man, yeah, I got it. That works for when you want to boycott Gucci. That's a shoe. That's a shirt. Don't buy no more. But again, she's not the only black person competing in the Olympics. This would literally be like, okay, well, they let the only black person, they kicked her out. Okay, now you got a different discussion. 
but there are other black people. What about all the black men that are going to be playing in the USA basketball who are taking knees during the national anthem and putting Black Lives Matters on the court? We're now not going to support them? Like there are hundreds of other stories of athletes who have faced tr tremendous personal strife and have made it to the Olympics and we're going to desert them because one person can't handle the pressure of the outside circumstances of life. We shouldn't do that. We shouldn't do that. Be fair to all the athletes, okay? We can support her in her non-Olympic situations, whatever that may be. But support other black people in the games, man. So let me get this straight. So I read this story yesterday about this this runner. Her name is, is Shakira. Is that how you is that? Yeah, her Shakari. Name? Isn't it Shakari? Shakari. Shakari. Um, or sh of course, of course, listen, I got to say this prior to this story of her not being able to compete in the Olympics. I, I just, I don't follow track and field. Does anybody else? I mean, we, no, no, I know. nobody, nobody, right nobody now. knows. Yeah. Right. But so now is the time. Right. And because of the story, now we're all following it. I read yesterday that she was left off the four by 100 relay team. Mm -hmm. Right. And I thought to myself, okay. I'm either going to have to really invest time to do research in this or I'm not going to do it, but here's what I don't understand. If she was already told she couldn't compete in the 100 yard or right. the 100 meter rather, then, then why is it that she can't compete now? She in could the four have by 100, but I don't understand the, why, why is that? Because the length she, of the, the length of the suspension would have cut her off for the hundred, the four by 100, she still would have been able to make that because the date is later in the Olympics. She was suspended for okay. 28 days. That's all. Right. Okay. Got it. Thank you guys for the clarification. So, so that's kind of what people are upset for because I don't, I'm not upset about it, but I don't understand it is why did they not choose her? So they were able yeah. to choose her because they pick, I believe the way I read it this morning was they take the top four women mm -hmm. based off results. Then they have two alternates mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the USA track and field came out and said, we agree that the rules should not be there. We are just following right. the rules. So why did you not take her then? She's clearly yeah. the fastest woman on the team. Yeah. And here's a just a quick question and a, and a point of clarification. Because again, I'm I'm surfacey on stories like these. I'm not like deep into these kinds of things. I, I'm headlines. I'm not in depth. So here's a question. When she was um, told that she can't compete in the 100, is that... Is that the USOC, the United States Olympic Committee, where she fails the drug test or they find, I, I shouldn't even call it that, they find cannabis in her system? Right. Um, is it the USOC making that call or is it the actual IOC, the International the Olympic IOC. Committee? Okay. So it's it's the Olympics saying she can't compete. It's not the USA Olympics saying she can't compete for us. It's both. Well- I, you the, know, the, the, IOC, the IOC gave her the suspension. Mm -hmm. Then the USA track organization came out and said, we basically don't want her on the team. That is, that is such garbage. You know, you would think that the U.S. Olympic Committee would make a stand on behalf of its athletes. Now, by the way, listen, I'll say it very candidly. If she were a team member but not really a gold medal type championship caliber athlete, you know, mm -hmm. I'd be like, I'd be like, whatever, who cares? But don't we want to send our best and don't we want to win as many golds as possible? I have and if the answer, if the answer is yes, then why shouldn't the United States Olympic committee say, look, the international Olympic committee suspended her for this period of time. Mm -hmm. She's eligible to return to competition at this period of time. That's good news for us because we can actually get her back on the track and she can help us win a gold. Why would the U.S. Olympic Committee not support its athlete? Forget about the policy, just the athlete herself. Why would we not, I say we, the U.S., why would we not be supporting her and putting her on the track if nothing else, if in protest to the stupidity of the of the rule today? I, would I don't understand it. I, I, I'll paint this. I'll paint this question for you, Alex, as well. You tell you guys tell me what y'all think. I think the track organization went to the people who were going to make the team and said, "Hey, do you guys want her on the team?" 
Because if, if you did, you're going to make a big stink about it, then we're going to look bad. So we'll put on the team if you guys want her on the team. And they said no. They said no. Because if the people on the 4 by one wanted her on the team, they would make us think about it because it's after the suspension, and they would put her on the team. I think or, there's more to this story that has not come out yet about her relationship within that within that organization. Because I mean, one of the runners also came out and said, well, the same thing that I said, there are other people competing. So let's support everybody as opposed to just ditching the entire Olympic roster of African-Americans for one person. Well, that is, first of all, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard, okay? If, if you think that all African-American athletes should protest and not go represent watch. the United States in the Olympics. Not watch. You, not watch the Olympics. Yes, not watch. The black not, athletes are going. They're all going because, again, they've, they've earned their spot. She foiled hers or soiled hers. You picked the word. I, I would not go because of her. So I'm. they're saying that people not to watch it. I'm saying you should watch it. Why would they not watch it? I mean, it's I mean, called to protest. Listen, um, <laughs> I mean, you asked the question. That's all. That's the answer. Okay. The annoyance on his face. Yeah. The I mean, annoyance it, on it his just, face. It, it just blows my mind. It's like, it's like, look, um, I believe that this young lady has worked her ass off. She's the most talented athlete, apparently, in her sport and can bring Olympic glory to America. The fact that she was suspended over using weed to me is insane, but the decision has been made. Uh, the rules were as they are violated. And so that sucks. But for everybody to say, we're all going to protest now because of one person. That, that also seems ridiculous. To That's me. dumb. That's dumb. I understand. Again, when there, this is like some fashion designer did something stupid or some television person says something stupid. Those are two completely different things. Those are individuals. Those are one, those are one offs. You're asking everybody to not support everybody else because of one rule that we all agree is stupid. So how about we work on the Olympics changing that rule in the future, as opposed to just abandoning it now today and not supporting all the other athletes. I mean, they already said there won't be any people there. Which is also crazy. So, um, yeah, well, it's, it's not crazy because Japan is not the United States. It's just what it, it is. What it is. But uh, the United States to no, go but back. Why to, would you? Why would you be hosting the games? Well, that's a whole entire different now? question. Yeah, that's what a whole can they do. Thing. I mean, they're they're kind of screwed now. It's either cancel the Olympics or host them without without spectators. Right. By the way, you think you, you, a lot of people have been inconvenienced? You think people around the world have bought plane tickets? They probably they bought tickets to events. You know, a lot of inconvenience here, you know? Yeah. Well, I was, why did she not get chosen by the USA track and field that um, I'm reading that at the time of selection, you must be eligible and for them to select her would have been against their policy. That's what they said. So there you oh, go. Please. That's convenient. While USATF fully agrees that the merit of the world anti-doping agency rules related to THC should be reevaluated. Mm -hmm. It would be detrimental to the integrity of the U.S. Olympic team trials for track and field if USATF amended its policies following competition only weeks before the Olympic Games. That's what they yeah. said. Yeah, Browner, you might be right, though. There, there could be more to it. And just in terms of like, if you're on the 4 by 100 relay team, you might be looking at it going, hey, can we win without her? And right. If the answer, and if the answer is yes, we can win without her, then it's like, then why let her kind of steal the spotlight, if yep. you will? Why that's there, might be, to her. there might be someone else that got chosen in front of her that they like better. It could be simple. Yeah. It could be petty. It could be petty. Who knows? Yeah. Again, this, it, when it comes down to the four by one, they all could have easily ganged up and said, we're not running if she's not on the team. Yeah. Well, all right. Listen, we are uh, we are in the seven mile casino studios here on a Thursday afternoon. There are some first thoughts. I started off with, you know, no Olympics. crowds at the Olympics. Yeah. Um, Alex brought us home and, and talked about how bad Chris Paddock is. Browner brought us right back to the Olympics. So there's some opening thoughts. We're just getting rolling. Let's actually get to what happened last night, not only with the Padres, but around the NL West as we continue to follow it literally every day. We'll get there coming right back. It's Kaplan and crew. 
What's up, great friends? It is a Thursday afternoon here on Kaplan and Crew with Grande and the Brown Man. If you're listening to us on radio this afternoon, awesome. If you're joining us on our YouTube channel, that's great too. Make sure you get involved in our YouTube chat. And if you are catching up to us tonight on television, it's Channel 4 San Diego, and you're sitting there at home watching going, I know, moron, I'm watching this right now. Channel 4 Santa Barbara. And if you're in Palos Verdes or Orange County, it's Channel 118 on Cox Your View. Alex, I just saw you messing with your ace bandage yeah. around your wrist that you told us yesterday. You know, you're punching bags in like video games. You're riding bikes and getting hurt. You're not sure if it's carpal tunnel. Are you okay? Are you going to survive here today? Oh, yeah, yeah, dude. I woke up feeling so much better. Whatever I did here, injecting myself with with the, with these drugs I got from TJ, I feel great. You know, I feel fantastic. These steroids. What do, mean, that, what do you mean drugs from TJ? What do you mean? What do I mean? Did you go you down know, to TJ? Come on. When you need things, you just go down at South and they have ointments for everything. No, I got it. Come on, bro. Little don't dry fun. snitch. Don't dry snitch. Listen, don't Scott, try snitching. Pharmacias, baby. You can mm -hmm. go down there and get anything you want. to get them people at your dough, man. Do that when I'm gone. Yeah, I can't. I can't have. I can't afford to run in with the people. No, dude, you're fine. You so, but Alex, you all good. Like literally cruise down. No, 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 no. Pick no. up some meds or no, something. No, no, no. I got some. I got some American drugs, and there I feel fine. I feel fantastic. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're good. Like, as long as I don't move my thumb too much, I, I feel good. This morning I woke up and I was actually, oh look, I can actually move it today, so I feel I feel fine. It was a yeah. big time swelling yesterday, which was weird. That came out of nowhere, and, and instead of going to the urgent care, I got a haircut instead because prior <laughs> priorities. It's called it, it's called inflammation. You have a lot of inflammation in your thumb. Yeah, you show you tell him, brother. You Thanks, tell him, doctor. doctor. Thanks, doc. Yeah, the doctor. I don't know why I need yeah. urgent care. The dude's in You're my welcome. kitchen. Yeah, no, dining room. That's dining right. room. Just come on in during the break. Yeah. yeah. Hey, um, funny, though, because as Alex has this hand wrapped <laughs> in this, this mystery injury, this all after my mystery illness last week, I don't know if anybody saw on Alex's social media, but uh, on his Instagram, dude, his fiance almost ruined, like, the vacation. <laughs> she, almost, she almost died. She almost, she almost, like, lost her life. Dude, I, I was what? Okay, I was watching this yesterday. I, I'm flipping through Instagram yesterday, and I see Alex's uh, video come up. Was it was it Mars' birthday? Yeah, it was her birthday yesterday. Okay, Browner, have you Shout seen out. this? Yeah, dude, I saw her yesterday too. Yeah, so she goes to blow out her candles on her birthday cake. Which let me just have a time out for a second and say this: in 2021. I didn't know people still blew out candles on birthday cakes. And the reason is because I thought in COVID, I thought if you up. have a birthday cake mm -hmm. and you go, <laughs> well, then you're blowing your germs all over the cake and then people go to eat the cake. So I didn't she even think about to, that. Forgot yeah, about well, that. Yeah. She goes to blow out the candles and dude, she almost lights her entire head on fire. Uh -huh. Can you, can we take a look at this? Let's, let's do some analysis right here. What's some what analysis took place here? Okay. Yeah. We might have to even put it into slow motion here. I don't know. If I can. <laughs> Right there. Oh <laughs> Look at Alex. <laughs> yeah. The, you can hear the collective fear from whoever off the screen goes, oh, yeah. yeah, they saw the yeah. fire. You know what yeah. my favorite part, which is off camera, and because my view, you can't really see the flame too well from the, the only person videoing the thing. Yeah. But my view, that thing engulfed very fast. Like, the, whatever she has going on in her hair was flammable. So... <laughs> Like literally, I like she. There was two little cakes. I got her one just like in the morning, just say happy birthday. And then her mom made her like this like fruit tart thing. So they put candles on both for whatever reason. And she thought she blew out the cake cake, and she goes to blow out the tart, and her she didn't blow out the first candles, and it just like literally catches fire. And the best part about this whole thing is her mother's reaction was nothing. Like she loved it. She like her mom stared at her like oh, this is my kid just lighting her hair on fire on her birthday. Like like just complete and utter like just didn't care. Like just was yeah. did like almost disappointed. That was my favorite part. But everybody else was like, whoa, whoa. Yeah, it was great. It's funny you say that because I was looking and it looked like she had just gotten like her hair done and some highlights in her hair. You yeah, know? She, was, like, she went blonde a while ago. So yeah. I'm like, Fresh there's some chemicals. Baby. Right, there's some chemicals and mm -hmm. some flammability to that hairdo. Show it to us one more time. Watch Alex's reaction. He's such a sweetheart. Fast, right here. fast, bro. Oh my god. 
Everybody was like, everybody was like, oh, oh, Linda. <laughs> Linda replied on Instagram. She's like, what a cheap way to cop a feel. And I'm like, yo, bro, I'm just Dude, listen. Alex, Alex's pats to put the fire out are hilarious. Look at the way his hands dog paddle to put the flames out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Play it again. Oh, man. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, watch, dude, his, watch, his hair, watch his paddles. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my god. Yeah. And she's just oh, laughing god. the whole time. Like there's no concern on her. They're like, oh, oh my god, my hair is on fire, you know? No. Oh, no. no. Like no. she was oblivious to the fact that she was in real danger. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out, Mar. Happy birthday. You almost Yeah, happy birthday. Listen. She almost Michael Jackson herself. You know, I do a lot of things that are heroic, obviously, but this is top of the oh, list. Wow. Saved her yep. life, you know. All heroes don't hero. wear capes, huh? Yep. I mean, when I gave that kid the ball at the Padres game, oh, my you know. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> okay, Steve Rogers. I don't know why you get so upset at me just doing okay, heroic Steve. things, bro. Like, all right, Steve Rogers, way to yeah. talk about your heroics, sir. Did you see the reflexes? Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, quick. Dude, quick. Very nice. Very, that very fire nice. had no chance. Like a no big old basset hound, just put yeah. them and just put it out. I'm glad I didn't have like any uh, any like bandages. Like, there's so much tiger bomb on my hand right now. I probably would have engulfed my hand. <laughs> Wouldn't it have been great? Yeah. I mean, she has she has no oh. idea that when she she thinks she's blown out the right. first candle, and as she goes to the right. second candle, she has no idea that the first candle None. is still lit. And here comes her hair on. And fire. then so the because yeah, she leaned over, and the part that caught fire was behind her. Mm -hmm. So I was behind her. I was trying to get out of the frame for the video, you know, like let her be in the video or pictures, whatever was being taken. So I was trying to get out of frame, but yeah. I had the perfect angle of just a poof. It looked like a little mini firework, man. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Nice. Well, happy birthday. And, uh, and I hope that uh, when you guys get back from your vacation after next week, that uh, we get right back on it with our man, Gary Cooper, Mountain Trust Mortgage and Realty Services. Um, are you really truly taking a break, Alex? Because oh, I know you, I you went to. and you... You put that offer in on that place down in Otai. <laughs> then they then they said, nah, thanks anyway, but we got somebody else who's probably paying more and paying in cash. Then Manny Machado came and bought it. Yeah, last night yeah. I think it was like about midnight, and I'm like trying to get to bed, and she goes, hey, I know this isn't the time to talk about it, but I want to see three houses before we go to Cabo. <laughs> and I'm like, bro, <laughs> come on, man. I thought we were taking a break. She's like, there's an open house on Saturday. There's this one. There's one in Mission Valley. And I'm like, all right, whatever. Let's whatever you want to do. It's not my call. All right. Well, if you, uh, if you like Alex and his fiance are, are interested in, uh, buying a house, selling a house, if you would like to refinance and get yourself into a better loan situation, if, um, if you are trying to do what Alex was doing, it took a long time to position yourself and get your documents together, make sure credit scores are right. I mean, all the little things the nuances that you have to take care of before you're actually positioned and ready to buy a house, you call our guy, Gary Cooper, Mountain Trust Mortgage and Realty Services, 858-376-1299, 858-376-1299, Gary Cooper, Mountain Trust Mortgage and Realty Services. Okay, guys, let's do this. Let's, uh, let's jump in to what happened last night with the Padres because it's become like a daily fixture on the show which is what happened with the Padres and what happened with the Giants, what happened with the Dodgers. Let's kind of go through everything that took place last night as we're all following every single day what's going on. And then, by the way, I want to get to the Dodgers because it's, it's not what happened in their game against Miami. It's what they have done organizationally. You know, yesterday we knew that the Dodgers – we're shutting down the Trevor Bauer bobblehead night, which is August 19th. It's still six weeks away. I mean, a lot can happen between now and then where they go, you know what? Let's wait it out. Let's kind of see how things play out. No, they bailed on that. But then they did something else that was very interesting, which is starting to make people think that the Dodgers now realize this is more than just smoke. It's like Mars so hair. Get <laughs> it, right. It's actually, it's not just smoke. It's actual fire. Yep. Right. All right, so let's go through last night. Alex, why don't you lead us through this? Because Chris Paddock was just awful. I mean, he was just throwing batting practice last night to the Washington Nationals, gave up nine runs. Take us through this, Alex. Well, this is just his season stats. Because it's not just last night. It's the entire season. 
He's four and six with a five four four ERA on the season. Seven starts under five innings pitch, which included last night. Where last night, I believe he went two innings and he started the third. And I, I what I appreciated, and and I know Browner's not a fan of Tingler, and I could be reading too much into it. Tingler was like, I'm not taking him out. I want AJ to see how bad this dude really is right now. So I'm going to leave him out there to dry. And he gave up eight earned runs, nine total. <laughs> and because Tingler's done with the kid, I think. I really genuinely think that Tingler is not listening to AJ. And he's like, I'm not going to bring in a reliever. I'm not going to burn my bullpen in the first inning for another Chris Paddock start. I'm going to let this kid out to dry so everyone here can see how bad he really is if I leave him in right now. I'm tired of hooking him early, and I'm tired of saving him. Here you go. Nine runs, two innings. Yep, yep. Two innings, and nine runs, nine hits, eight earned runs, a walk, two strikeouts, and gives up a home run. Uh, just you look at this box score, you look at this line, and you're thinking to yourself, because I here, just real quick, here's what happened. Um, I went out for a fancy dinner last night Ooh, with uh, a, where? a friend of mine. Not with me oh, and, and Browner. It, it, no, no, it was me, Rachel, and a friend of mine. You guys remember my last year got into a real bad bike accident? Yes. Like, yeah. How's he? He's okay. He's doing good. Um, and we were kind of out last night, sort of celebrating the fact that hey, he's alive, made it through. Um, you know, we were talking about cycling and how none of us want to get on our bikes ever again. We're petrified to be out on the roads. You know, uh, yeah, watch so out for those this, cardboard signs now too. Seriously. Oh, and we're, we're right. And we're, we're having this like celebratory dinner. And, um, and it's one of these dinners where like it, it, it was a fancy dinner. And when it was done, I was like, Oh my God, that just cost a lot of money. And guess what? I'm freaking starving. Like I'm literally <laughs> starving. The worst. the worst. I felt like the biggest jerk. I was like, I just wasted this much money. You know how many pairs of sneakers for my kids I could have bought? <laughs> you know? What did you, okay. How many courses? You, you right, thank you. You won't say where. Okay, what no, did you eat? It, it, what did you order? You don't have to say where. What did you order? It doesn't. It, listen, I'm just telling you right now. There was there was um, a an app that we had a salad, like a Caesar salad. Rachel ordered some kind of like a tuna dish, like a bluefin tuna dish. I ordered a salmon dish, and my buddy who was there, um, he ordered a couple of um, small bottles of wine. But like they they were like a fancier wine than we would have ordered because we would have been much happier with less expensive wine. And so when the bill came, I was like, oh, my God, are you freaking kidding me how expensive this dinner was? Right. So we get done with dinner and Rachel's going home. Uh, she's super tired. I'm going to go home, get to my kids. And um, I'm like, I I'm starving. Like, I can't believe I just spent this much money on a dinner. I had mm. this much wine because I, I really um, since my whole vocal cord thing, I stopped drinking. So I had like a little sip of wine. Right. <laughs> so, you know, poor Rachel, like kind of had all this wine poured for her. And um, and the bill came. I was like, I cannot believe how much this cost. Oh, by the way, I also got a parking ticket in oh. Delmar because I thought I parked in a completely legal spot. Turns out I didn't. Um, so I got a forty five dollar parking ticket. So the whole night cost me a fortune. Right. Then on my way home, I'm thinking I am starving. I go to my favorite pizza shop. OK, <laughs> in Del in Solana Beach, I stop in, I grab two slices of cheese pie while I'm in there. I'm standing there talking to all the pizza guys because they're watching the Padre game. And they, you know, I've been going to the same place forever. They're all listeners to the show. I come walking in. They're like, Kaplan, you believe what's going on here? Paddock sucks. Paddock is terrible. Yes, I do believe all, it. All the pizza guys are like, Paddock freaking sucks. We got to get rid of Paddock. And what I was saying to the guys is, look. If the Padres are for reals about making a real run, and I wouldn't be satisfied with wild card, I wouldn't be satisfied with postseason, I would be thinking championship. And the reason I'd be thinking that is because I'm not sure I really buy the Giants, and I really think that what we've seen the Padres do to the Dodgers so far this year, and with the Dodgers having this Trevor Bauer story, and who knows what the future is of that guy. If Kershaw I'm on that injured list. Mm -hmm. I, but, but I think Kershaw is more of like a – take time before the all-star break and rest up. I'm not so sure he's really got anything happening. Nonetheless, the point is I'm going for it this year. And if I'm going for it this year, here's the one thing I know. And by the way, the pizza guys know this too. <laughs> Paddock can't be part of this. Paddock cannot be a part of this. And they, I would like to see the Padres make a move. Like go out and say, listen, you Darvish has paid off. Um, 
Joe Musgrove, yeah, the no hitter, but come on, he, he he's not been dominant hardly. Okay. Um, and and Blake Snell, I think a lot of us have been a bit disappointed in, in Blake Snell. Unless he's at home. Reputation. Yeah. Based on but but based on his reputation coming to San Diego, I, I think we thought, I think that we all thought we were gonna get a lot more. So yes. look, Paddock's terrible. Um, Weathers is still a young guy. Clearly, Mackenzie Gore, for whatever reason, has Sucks. not yet been brought up, apparently, uh, or just isn't ready. I keep hearing that, but isn't ready kind of is starting to make me think sucks. Um, and so <laughs> you got to go. You got to go out and make a move. Could be the same. Something, something's got to happen here. I don't. And so shout out to my pizza guys at Bongiorno's in Solana Beach. If you're going to do something, I, 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 I've said this a million times. I think they should trade for Chris Bryant. But if you also want to trade for Max Scherzer, who's taking a guy with a five run ERA? I mean, you're like, not trading Paddock. But but I'm saying you you have to trade McKenzie. Any any top line pitcher or person you get right now, whether it be Chris Bryant or Max Serger or anybody else high on the trade list that can actually help you, they're gonna want they're gonna want some high level prospects. And with Abrams being out for the year, so physically you may not know what's going on with him. Who else do they really have to trade that you can get a top line guy? I don't know. So I think you haven't Weathers. seen McKenzie Gore like I've said for a while. You better not trade Weathers. They don't they, they don't believe in him. And he's better as a prospect, as a chip to move, as a blue chip to move for somebody else than he is actually playing for the Padres. That's why I think you don't you won't see him. Because anybody could do better than that last night. Like that was hey, pathetic. Yeah, that's not saying much though. I think the problem is for the Padres is that we went into the season thinking that the we well, we all said that the the Padres pitching staff is the strength of theirs. When yes. really it's clearly not. The number one, two, and three thing on AJ Preller's wish list is starting pitcher, starting pitcher, starting pitcher. It's got to be like, and honestly, it, but you, you might need a closer the way Mel Anson pitched in, in the month of June. So, or you could yeah. put Lamette as closer. If Lamette can only give you one inning, throw his ass as a closer. He's great for one inning. Like, he's really good for one inning. And then his shoulder flames up, or his elbow flames up, or his forearm, or his entire. <laughs> It looks like this after two innings. You know what I mean? So yeah. that's all I'm saying. Like, you gotta, there's you gotta some, have the ace bandage on the There's hand. some serious issues with this Padres rotation. That is obvious. I just yeah. really hope that by come July 31st, AJ, Senor Rockstar Preller, can figure out something. We need something. But I, I think with Darvish, Weathers, and, and Musgrove, because Musgrove had a really high point with the no-hitter. But other than that, he's been a little bit above average. But that's okay, because as the third guy, I can deal with that. But you Darvish first, Weather second, Musgrove, and then you figure out the last two. Because I, I think you should put Lamet in the bullpen too. You can have uh, the closer pitch in the eighth and have Lamet pitch in the ninth. Boom, you've now locked that up. So just get to the sixth inning and get two guys to get you through the seventh. Like, I, I don't really understand what, what the complication is about this. But you've got to get something. Yeah, Chris Paddock is just terrible. It is not. It is not worked out at all it was cute and it was fun for like a couple of months you know the the bolo tie the uh the the cowboy hat the the fake intensity you know the 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 storyline that that ac was trying to push on everybody because the padres were pushing it on him it was cute for like a, a minute and now it's boring it's tired and it's not productive so yeah let me take a look to that the uh innings pitched by the bullpen Mm -hmm. Padres are first in baseball. Their bullpens Ugh. get in text incredibly. Look at the Dodgers. They're 23rd, and the Giants are 24th out of 30 teams. The Padres need starting pitching immediately. Okay. Alex, go to the rest of uh let's go to the rest of the NL West because let's take a look at what happened. Now, this is today's Thursday. So this happened yesterday on Wednesday. But Grande, take us. Uh, Giants uh, beat the Cardinals that they have today off. They are in first place at 54 and 32. They start a three-game series against these Nationals that we are seeing right now. The Dodgers played this morning in Miami. Uh, before that, they lost three in a row in Miami, which was nice. They're 53 and 34, a game and a half back. And then the Padres, who just can't seem to just get closer than three and a half games. They're four and a half at 51 and 38. They take on the Nationals tonight, and it, it is a hell of a game, boys. We got you Darvish versus Max Scherzer tonight at Peco Park starting at 6, 10 p.m. I can tell you this right now. Um, when the NBA Finals Game 2 is on tonight versus this game right here between the Padres and the Nationals and this pitching matchup, 
it, it's not even a question mark for me. Mm-hmm. I'm way all in on this Padre game tonight versus being all in on this NBA Finals game two game tonight. Alex, is there a soccer game that will take no, you away not from tonight. the Padres tonight? No, not tonight. England England beat um, who they play? Denmark yesterday uh, mm-hmm. in extra time. So it is Italy versus England in the Euro 2020 final on Sunday. And it's Argentina versus Brazil on Saturday. Messi versus Neymar in the Copa America. And the Gold Cup gets started at some point here in the U.S., which I assume is going to be U.S.-Mexico. You know, you mentioned this weekend and these big soccer matches. Um, another big event coming up this weekend is Trevor McGregor back in Who? the octagon. Who he play for? Did I get his name? Did I Connor say, McGregor? What I say? You said Excuse Trevor me, McGregor. Who's Trevor? Who's Trevor? Trevor Bauer. Yeah, maybe. Um, Conor McGregor, excuse me. It actually sounded wrong coming out of my mouth. Conor (laughs) McGregor back in the octagon. I want to talk about that. I want to get a preview of this Conor McGregor fight. Stick around. Hey, great friends. We welcome you back inside the Seven Mile Casino Studios here of Kaplan and Crew along with Grande and the Brown Man. If you're catching up to us tonight on television on Channel 4 San Diego and the Cox Your View Network, could be Channel 4 Santa Barbara. It might be Channel 118 in Palos Verdes in Orange County. TV viewers at night. Um, I know you got a lot of choices, right? I mean, tonight you're going to have Padres and Nationals, huge pitching matchup. You're going to have Game 2 of the NBA Finals. And uh, I actually found myself last evening watching um, Tampa Bay and Montreal in the NHL Stanley Cup Finals. And I was actually kind of blown away by it because – I don't really pay that much attention to hockey, but you think about Tampa Bay. They won the NHL Stanley Cup Finals last year. They won the Super Bowl with the Buccaneers last year, and they've won the Stanley Cup again this year. And I'll just send a shout out to a lot of San Diego. The Rays made the World Series. That happened how long ago? Was it two last years year? ago? Last year. Oh, that's right. That's right. Exactly. Against the Dodgers, right? Um, but I also want to say this. Um, there's a guy who works for the Tampa Bay Lightning. His name is Jared Dillon. And he works in the front office. Does anybody remember that name? Anybody know that name? He used to work for the Padres. And he would come into the radio studio of 1090 all the time. Got to know this young man as he was just kind of coming up as a front office exec with the Padres. He works down for the Lightning. Guess what? My man just got his second ring. Just got his second ring. And uh, and it's always great to see guys, guys, girls, people who come through San Diego and then go on to have other success in other places. Does he get a day? Does he get a day with the Stanley cup? Does he get a day to take it home and do whatever he wants with it? That's a good question. I'm not sure. You know, I think as I recall, Jared was a tight end at Oregon um, in his college days. And then, like I said, started off with the Padres. This has got to be at least 10 years ago and has worked his way into the front office with the best franchise in NHL hockey. So congrats to him and any connections that he's got, here in San Diego. So um, as we're just getting back into the Seven Mile Casino Studios, man, the last segment we were talking about a few things, but one thing that's got me still bothered, I'm still so irritated. Doesn't anybody else experience this and know this feeling? You go out to dinner, you go to a nice place, you spend more money than you wanted to, and it's okay if you leave full and satisfied, but it sucks when you spend a bunch of money on a dinner, you're not full, you're not satisfied, and then you get done and you go, so uh, what's for dinner? What are we going to eat? Yeah. What's, what's for dinner? I get this feeling with uh, sushi often where I'll eat, yeah. be full in the moment, and like 30 minutes, an hour later, I'm starving. Yeah. Like for whatever reason with sushi, I get that. But it's never because of the price. I don't know, tend to go to places where the price is going to bother me. You know? Like it's just like I don't. Not my, not my thing, Scott. So well, I, I would, pr- I'm kind of the same way. I really don't want to overpay, you know, um, and I don't really need to go to a fancy place ever. I'm so much happier in a more casual environment. If you told me, hey, you can go to a bar restaurant, or you can go to like a fancy dining restaurant, dude, I'll take casual all day long, you know, all day. But it was a little bit of a celebration dinner last night. And I made the one critical mistake. I let a friend of mine, who's a very successful guy, order it's wine. Not- no, mm-hmm. it, wasn't, it wasn't the picking of the spot. It was the ordering of the wine. That was the problem. Two reasons. One, I wasn't really drinking. And two, <laughs> if I would have been ordering the wine, we would have ordered much more reasonable bottles. 
Behringer, House Red. Dude, we're uh, we we would prefer like Chardonnay white wine. I would drink. I'm telling you, dude. Um, Menage a trois. Well, whoa, yeah. What? I know that brand. I know everybody knows I know, that. Brand. I know what you're talking about, Grande. Everybody Grande. knows that brand. Yeah. yeah, it's for the non-wine drinkers' favorite wine. Yeah. All right. There's a there's a, a couple of brands of wine, white wine, Chardonnay, that Rachel and I would drink like all day long. La Crema. Very, La Crema is where it's at. La Crema, bro. very inexpensive oh. and delicious buttery bottle of Chardonnay. I have a bottle in the fridge. You know, there delicious. Browner, you want to go get it? Delicious. So but I sitting around drinking white wine, huh? Yeah. That's right. Racist. That's yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Racist, yeah. racist wine yeah. drinkers. Yeah. And what y'all yeah. doing, huh? You drink a white yeah. wine, huh? Ain't no other yeah. kind of wine good enough for y'all, huh? It's a white wine, huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, I see where you at. You don't drink rosé, Scott? Um, uh, Rachel drinks rosé. Um, I'll drink she, it. I'll drink it. But she prefers the white wine, huh? Um, yeah, I think we're more like Chardonnay white wine mm. drinkers. Yeah. yeah so you, the, well, you're a white wine, wine kind of guy, huh? Yeah, I don't really want mm. that super dark, heavy yeah. red wine. You know, it's it's, it's, oh. it's it's wineism. Maybe it's wineism. It's, it's not bad racism, for you, huh? It's the dark it wine is bad. bad for you, huh? Yeah, really bad for you. Bad for your for your bad for your acid reflux, darling. Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm glad. I'm good. I'm glad to know that now. Yeah. All right. So if you want to get me a bottle of wine, white wine, please. Listen, I would never get you any other kind. Yeah. Wineism. You know, yeah. you've heard of racism. This is wineism is what this is. Clearly. clearly. Right. That's why. So that's why Browner likes stouts. That's yeah, right. Because right. they're yeah. dark and brown. They're dark and mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, thick, heavy. That's right. That's how I like it. Yeah. yeah. Got that's it. right. He doesn't Got like it. those light beers. He doesn't like those those mm -hmm. lagers. They're they're mm -hmm. too pale. You that's know, right. like Guinness in the fridge too, Browner. Yeah. Well, hi, man, I could be drinking this tomorrow. Say that for tomorrow. Multicolored here. All right. Well, we got the 40 beer, on tomorrow. Beer Friday is tomorrow. By the way, can we give a, a quick shout out and a promotion for Beer Friday tomorrow? Oh, this is a straight from North Park Brewery. Only in North Park Brewery. Mm -hmm. Original 40. I think it's been open for about two years now. Mm -hmm. uh, Browner went to go pick up the beer yesterday, so it's already here. Uh, it's a microbrewery here that just started canning like every other brewery during COVID. Um, and they'll be on tomorrow. All right. Yeah. Hey, um, we should actually tell everybody uh, you, you mentioned because I don't know the name of the brewery. I think you just said it was called Original 40. Original 40. Mm -hmm. I just got my my beers that we're going to try tomorrow. If I grab them, we could show them to everybody. And then this way, those of you that want to do the tasting with us can can have that opportunity to do that. The young I lady have to, have to run out and, and get them. Go ahead. I have a speech to give while you're gone. The well, young lady who works at Original 40. What a sweetheart. So I get there. She gives me the drinks. She gives me the merch. And there is a legit crazy guy standing on their patio singing DMX topless. Just rapping DMX. All the bad words, too. And mm -hmm. within less than two feet, there's a couple sitting trying to have a, a, a beer on a sunny afternoon. And this guy's just ruining it. And she just calmly goes out, sits at the table with the people. And then goes, hey, sir, can you get down? This is a kind of a, this is a restaurant. This is a bar. Well, we all know how university gets down sometimes. It's probably not Bro. the first time. Uh, who? Had, listen, Todd Gloria, you got to do something about university, dog. It, it's crazy out there. Just homeless people out there rapping DMX, ruining all people's lunches. Come on, Todd. You, you do better, Todd. One of my children to, uh, I think it's the only one that's here. Oh, wait, hold on. I know you do. Hold on, wait, Julia. <laughs> wait, Julia. Julia, come here. Before. You just hand him the beer. The worst just hand him the beer. Life. She's having. She says she's having the worst hair day of her life. This is what broadcasting from home is today in 2020. Girl, look at this. Look at this. Going yeah. on TV look, too. Look at, look at Browner. Look at Browner's. Look at that. How's your hair day compared to Browner's? Hair? Yeah. I tried to put some water down. It didn't work. No, it didn't work out for you. Mm -hmm. Could you do me a favor? Go in the refrigerator in the garage. In the upper right corner, there's three beers. They're all together. They're Browner. You can get them too. They're like right next to you. I know it's not Beer Friday. I got it. We're we're promoting <laughs> Beer Friday. Hold on a second. All right, I'm, I'm going to just say this really quick. We're going to um, get into Conor McGregor and his fight on Saturday. And I also want to get into Trevor Bauer and what the Dodgers are doing with Trevor Bauer that has to make people feel like, wow, he, he's getting himself. I mean, there's some big, big trouble coming. Hold on one second, Jules. I'm going to have you put him back. This is the um, these are the beers that we're doing on Beer Friday. This is the Mexican lager right here. A little higher. A little higher. A little higher. There you go. And to your left. There we right. go. There we go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. Um, so, all right. Tell me the names of these beers because you guys can read them. I can't. Baja Sol, Mexican lager. Yeah. 
Uh, the juice may is that I is that what that is? Uh, juice maze, juice maze. So I'm assuming that's a hazy IPA. Um, it is a hazy IPA, yes. And the last one is called Glowing Sunsets, and it's an IPA. It's a West Coast IPA. Very nice. So these three beers right here from a brewery called Original Forty will be our guests tomorrow on Beer Friday. So if you want to now, Alex and John, people should go. You can only get these at the brewery in North Park. No, I, I don't know. I'm sure you could find them elsewhere, okay. like a Bevmo or something like that, or any sort of craft, like a bottle craft. Yeah. But I mean, the brewery itself is here in North okay. Park. Yes. Here, right. Jules. Bad hair day. Go. You want to say? You want to say goodbye to the dudes? Goodbye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. The, when is actually is she opening or closing today? What's happening at work? Yeah. Hey, Julia. They want to know if you're opening or closing at work today. Neither. Yeah. I, I had her call the manager of the place and she's like, my dad won't let me work there if I'm working by myself. Cause I don't know if I told you guys this or not, but I'm 14. Yeah. God, so you didn't tell yeah. us that. So, you know what I, you know what I decided is next week rather than, than letting her have a job, which I think is kind of, you know, I like that she's ambitious that way, but she's going to speed camp next week. I want to speed camp with my man, Marty which Graham. Is... Marty Graham was a guy who played football at, at San Diego state. Um, many years ago, he was like the star player of our indoor arena football team here in San Diego. He's a great strike guy. force. Uh, no, no, not strike force. This preceded oh. strike force. This was the, uh, the riptide. Got it. Uh, and uh. so Marty Graham, Marty Graham's a great guy. And in fact, yesterday when I signed her up for the camp, um, he texted me, he's like, Hey man, I saw you just signed Julie up for the camp. I'm like, yeah, man. I, cause here's the thing. She decided to get into track and field this past year. And um, didn't know what she was doing, but she was winning all these races. And I'm like, you know what? If you actually learned some form and you learned what to do and you had a game plan, you might actually be pretty, be pretty good. good. Yeah. Nice. So there you go. All right. So there's Not there's out. Beer Friday tomorrow. Original 40. Great name of a brewery, by the way. Yeah. OG 40. Dude, since she can't work, you should pay her for every race she wins. That's not a bad call, Brown. Mm -hmm. Not a bad call at all. All right. Let me do this. Let me Let me start off with Trevor Bauer. Then let me work my way into Conor McGregor. And I'm going to do that in just one minute. But first, I'm going to mention to everybody, Corky's Pest Control, 1-800-901-1102. And here's what I want to say about Corky's. Um, I've noticed some people in my neighborhood that have gotten tents on their homes. and um, Not the old guy, lady up the hill. No, no, not the old lady up the hill. What is, what is her deal? I don't know. I just don't want you know what I'm saying. I don't want her to fall down. Yeah. No, I don't I, want her because she can't go in her house because it's tenant. Yeah, no, no. I got this old lady who lives across the street from me. This lady's like 90 years old, and she has been living in this house for like 60 years. Like since the house was built, she's been living in this house. And let me tell you, this lady's amazing. She has this very steep driveway. She goes walking down it every day to check her mail. She pushes her garbage cans up. I'm like, yo, you need help? She's like, I got it. No problem. And then she gets in her car and she takes off. And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> This freaking lady is driving. I can't believe it. You know, but she's tough, man. This lady is tough. That um, hill would be great to for exercise. You should ask if Julia can run up those hills for exercise. Work on yeah, the quads. Really? So, um, so anyway, where were we? Oh, I was just about to talk about Corky's pest control. There's there's a guy around the corner and he's got his house tented and he doesn't have Corky. He's got another pest control company. And then there's another guy around the corner and he's got his house tented and he's got Corky's sign in front of it. And I'm like, there's a smart guy and there's a guy who just made a mistake. And here's why. If you think you have a termite issue, if you've seen like what looks like sawdust down at the base of your floors and you're like, what is this? It could be that termites are eating the wood in your house. And it's just kind of a, a part of life in Southern California. Um, it's, it's not an if, it's kind of a when. But when you call Corky's, Corky looks up your house and then he says, okay, here's, here's the price. And you're like, is that a quote or is, no, 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 it's not a quote. It's the price. We're not going to come out to your house and say, Hey, it's bigger. Didn't realize this situation. It's going to cost more. No, no. Once they quote the price, that is the price. But when they're done, then there's this four-year guarantee. So I would say this to you, if you're shopping around out there about uh, termite fumigation, here's what you do. You call Corky's and you call the other pest control companies and then just compare who has the four-year guarantee. One company, Corky's Pest Control. So for any of your pest control needs, Corky's Controls Pests, call that number. Call 1-800-901-1102. Corky's. Nice. 
Okay, I'm going to start off with Trevor Bauer. I'll move into Conor McGregor. They're not connected in any way. Two separate stories. Not Trevor McGregor? Not tre I, I put the two of them together earlier. I did that. But Conor versus Trevor. Not one person. Here goes. Trevor Bauer. So when the Dodgers say that they're going to bounce on the bobblehead night, you start to think to yourself, now, wait a second. Today is July. What's today's date? July 8th. 8th. Okay. Today's July 8th. August 19th is like 40 some odd days away. You know, between now and then a lot could happen. And We've invested, I say we, if I'm the Dodgers, we've invested $102 million in a very short-term contract for this guy. He was the premier number one available free agent pitcher, and the Dodgers are the spenders, and they got the money, so they went out and got the guy. So they've made this commitment, this financial commitment to him under the expectation that we're going to get what he's been. Now a couple of problems have happened. One, he is the face of the sticky stuff scandal. Not because he's been busted for the sticky stuff, but it's because he's admitted to everybody. Yeah, I use the sticky stuff. I use it because baseball hasn't policed it. So why wouldn't I try and use every advantage I can get? And when they said to him, well, Trevor, what are you going to be when you can't use the sticky stuff? He said, go back to two, three years ago. That's what I'm going to be. Um, uh, by the way, still pretty good, but it's a total admission of guilt. <clears throat> uh, guilty of something that baseball wasn't really policing. Okay, that's fine. You can live with it. You can also live with the fact that this guy's life is documented essentially on YouTube. Now, by the way, I don't know about you guys, but I haven't gone to his YouTube channel and seen, is he talking about what's happening? No. Okay, I wouldn't think so. I'm sure his lawyers have shut him down. So... As the Dodgers, you know he costs a lot of money. You know you expect excellence from the guy. He becomes the face of the sticky stuff scandal. He's living his life on a, on a daily vlog on YouTube. And now he gets caught up in this sexual misconduct allegation scandal. To the point where the Dodgers take him off the field. We talked about this yesterday. Major League Baseball helped him out with that. Um, they cancel his bobblehead night, which is still six weeks away, which starts to make you think they must know something. And this is the one move that's really now even more interesting than all of it. When they start to pull the merchandise, we don't want to sell merchandise with his name on it. I mean, when that happens, that is like the Dodgers. They might as well come right out and say it. We don't, we don't want to be affiliated with this guy anymore. I, I'm shocked by the whole thing. And I'm not shocked by the decisions of the Dodgers. I think they're the right decisions to make. But what this guy was, what he is, what they bought, what they received, what it's turned into, the fact that, that Dave Roberts has to answer questions about a guy that he barely knows and has been with his team for not even half a season. This is a, a fascinating story. Cancel the bobblehead night well in advance. Surprised. Pull all of his merchandise. Yeah. How about even going to MLB shop? You search Trevor Bauer and you get Trevor Story stuff. Like there is not an out, there's not a trace of Trevor Bauer even existing Dude, on the MLB even, shop right now. Even when they put your stuff up for sale, when they trade you or they're about to trade you or you're suspended, like at least your stuff's on a discount at some place. <laughs> They've taken it all down. This is this is as bad as it gets. Like you, your stuff not even on sale, bro. Your stuff not even on sale. I think I had to say yesterday. I think I I did say that another team would give him a chance if the Dodgers got rid of him somehow. Um, I'm not sure anymore. <laughs> like this is like I, I, at first I was like, yeah, you, you know, we dude, it just give it a couple time, give us some time, and people forget. But I don't know, man. Like this is. This this is like to not have a, a a trace of him on MLB shop is not a Dodger thing. That's a baseball right. thing now. Like that is that's more than just like a he's not pitching this year. That he that's out the question. He's done. Like I I'll, I'm pretty comfortable saying that right now. I don't know how 
you can come back from this. And then all of a sudden you're like, okay, he's back. Let's put his jerseys back up. Let's put his stuff back up. Like I said it yesterday, this guy admitted to doing everything that she everything. accused him of. He's just saying there was consent. So he's already kind of said, like, I, I, I did everything that I'm being accused of. That's not even in question. So I don't know a how the I like I said Dodgers done. I don't know how Trevor Bauer comes back anytime soon. And the thing is, is you know how in baseball they've got these guaranteed contracts. So if you're Albert Pujols, as an example, the Angels decide we don't want you anymore, so leave. But he still gets paid. And so you know, right now the Angels are all excited about Otani, understandably so. But the Dodgers are enjoying the services of Albert Pujols. <laughs> well, Artie Moreno and the Angels are paying for it, you know. But is there such a thing as uh, conduct detrimental to the contract? Oh, yeah, like yeah. we hear that all the time in the NFL, right? There, there has, has to, to be, be some yeah. protection. There's got to be some protection. Like, hey, if he gets hurt, we have an insurance policy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if he does something off the field that is bad for our business, detrimental to the game, blah blah blah. There's some sort of legalese in there. There's got to uh -huh. be some protection. And I would think that if I'm the Dodgers, I might look at his stats and go, this guy's a good pitcher. But I'm also looking at the, the off the field pain in the ass that he is. And I might want to get out from underneath this contract. This is a good, this is a very, very difficult situation for the Chargers to be in, not the Chargers, the Dodgers to be in <laughs> because of how good he really is. Like, how much of a stance are you really going to take? Because right. Bauer's really good. Uh, before he got this leave of administrative leave, he was the league leader in wins. So, but this goes. This back, is a real, real decision for them. But this also goes back to the people in that clubhouse. Do they want him around? Because if they make enough noise, he will be back. But if they make enough noise for him not to be back, he won't. Yeah. All right. Well, listen. I wanted to get into Conor McGregor. I haven't gotten to it yet. We will stick around. Next. Yeah, we'll get to it next. We're in the Seven Mile Casino Studios. It's Kaplan and Crew. All right, great friends. It is a Thursday afternoon here in the Seven Mile Casino Studios of Kaplan and Crew with Grande and the Brown Man. So I intended to get to Conor McGregor last segment. Didn't really happen for us. I don't remember exactly what happened. We were talking about Trevor Bauer. Somehow I think it started with, uh, you know. Trevor McGregor. Right. I'm never, That's how it started. I'm never going to live that down, am I? Be ah. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah, listen, mine and Browner's uh, memories are not the sharpest. Like yeah. we don't remember a lot of things. I so. got you. I got you. You know what I mean, right, Browner? Browner, you were saying. Nice. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. 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 A yellow yes. card for Browner. Yes. Hey, I told. Okay, so in commercial break, you were talking to your daughter. And Browner yells, that's great advice. And I was like, bro, his mic's muted. And I looked at Cam and I was like, his mic's muted. Let's get Browner on the camera as soon as possible. And boom. There he is. All right. Boom. Ye All right. Yellow Standings. Card. All right. Here. Three for Scott. Three for Browner. And I think I'm at one still. So boom. All right. Dirty dog. <laughs> Woo. Dude, you yelled, that's great advice. I was like, oh, he muted. This man said he was never going to mute his mic again, but here we are. Yeah. No, I said I could now because Scott was in the lead. Now I got to stop muting again. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you know, it's uh, it's um, interesting. You mentioned Alex Cameron. Give me one second because I'm going to talk about this, then I'm going to get to Conor McGregor. So, Alex, your plan is next week you're going to take vacation, right? Yes. Okay. And you're taking off not only a full week, you're taking off a full week and a day. So it's Monday. My flight comes back Monday. Right. Yeah. So you're off Monday through a following Tuesday. Yes. Okay. Very good. Enjoy yourself. I hope you have a Thank great you. vacation. Thank you. Uh, um, but I was saying it's a lot to ask Browner to host the show as he does and fill in the role that Alex does because Alex has it down to his own science, you know? And by the way, th th there's no like playbook for this. We're making it up as we go along, you know, and Alex has created his own standard operating procedures. So there's a young man who's working with us this summer. His name is Cameron Azir, and he goes to Syracuse, and he's in the broadcasting school at Syracuse, which is the number one broadcaster school in the country. And uh, he's from here in San Diego, went to high school here in town, and he's been doing the Sided podcast. 
So every day this kid is banging out content. And what he does is bang, bang, bang. Yeah. He takes kind of where John and Alex started. This whole thing is he literally, Alex, maybe you can pull it up on the screen for everybody. I'm pulling it up right now. This is awesome. If you are somebody who puts content on sided, you may actually get contacted by Cameron to join him on the podcast. Better yet. I'll tell you what, do this. Um, you can email me directly, scott at sided.co, scott at sided.co. I'll forward the email to Cameron and he can get you as a guest host on the podcast. As a matter of fact, Alex, click on episode 20 of the Sided podcast on YouTube and check this out. Cameron invited a, um, a, a Sided power user. A guy from San Diego, his name is Theodore Dunwet. I'm trying to pronounce his last name. Duenas. 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 And Theodore is a Padre fan. He's still a Charger fan. And Theodore co-hosted the Sided podcast. And what Cameron does is he goes onto the, the platform. He picks out a bunch of debates that people are talking about. And then the two of these guys go back and forth debating these topics. And Theodore was great. This guy, Theodore, is on site. He doesn't even have a Twitter account because I wanted to tag him on Twitter. He doesn't even have Twitter. But, man, he was he was awesome. And so if you're somebody who wants to be a guest host on the Sided podcast, email me, scott at sided.co. I'll forward it to Cameron. He'll get in touch with you. And uh, you may have an opportunity to co-host the Sided podcast, which I think is pretty cool. Wasn't Browner on there? Browner rocked it on there. Oh man, Cameron rocked it, dude. He's doing such a great job with that. It's 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 always good to see the platform continue on. I mean, he's doing a great, great job with it. So shout out to him for having me on. It was fun. More people should do it. It's a great way to be a part of Sided at the next level, like we talked about when it first started. Yeah, and I it's also it's also on uh on Spotify. Oh, great. Apple, Google, everything. Same yeah. thing. Yeah, so, so there you go. So I don't Just know. I don't, I don't know why he can figure it out, Browner, and you can't for Browner and Burt, but Browner now has that. You know what? Well. You you yeah. you uh, you better you a funny dude, man. Don't try to throw me under the bus like that. I'm yeah, don't do that. Bus. Don't, don't do I that mean, to you, me. I, I didn't don't have the answers, but Cameron do, did. Do better. Don't do that to me. No, you do better. <laughs> mm -mm. No. Yeah, you do better. You you gotta cut it out. All right, all right, Scott. Right now yeah. on Tuesday on third, what day is it today? Thursday, yeah. <laughs> July eighth. Yeah. Give me your conf confidence level of next week. Am I gonna have like you said? Uh, two weeks ago, when I told you, when I guess for the first time you heard it, that I'm what I'm taking off, mm -hmm. you said, Well, you better not come back because there won't be a show to come back to. That's where your confidence level was mm -hmm. as of today. Where is it at right I'm now? At, I'm at about an 80%. I'll tell you what I'm stressing out about, if I'm being honest. So, next Friday, Alex, you'll be down in Cabo enjoying yourself. Next yeah, Friday, well, go ahead. Mm -hmm. I'm, no, no, no. Well, okay. I'm going to let you okay. tell the story right. before I jump midway through. Right. So next Friday is opening day at Del Mar. Okay. Del Mar has been a long time sponsor of the show. And the, the thing that Del Mar has asked us is, can you guys do a broadcast from the racetrack on opening day? And my answer is always yes. You know, without knowing if the answer is really yes, my answer is yes. That's what the client wants. That's what the client is going to get. So I'm, I'm a little stressed out about that day. In fact, this morning I had a meeting with Del Mar and then Browner is getting involved now because there are some technical things that have to get done that I don't know anything about that Browner does. And so we're, we're on it, you know, but if I'm losing sleep about one thing with you going out of town, Alex, it's, it's twofold. It's one, you deserve a vacation and should take one. And two, if this were a normal radio station, the radio station would say, well, Alex is going on vacation. The next person who comes in to handle his job is this person. And we would have additional bodies. We don't really, have, well, in theory, I don't remember that at all. In theory, <laughs> every time I try to take a vacation, it was a disaster. Yeah. But, but again, in theory, that's the way it's supposed to work. There's supposed to be right. guys who can, can, can handle it so that people can take vacations that they're entitled to. Um, we don't really have a backup, you know, thankfully this young man, Cameron has done a great job of hosting the sided podcast. He's spent the last two days with Alex learning what Alex does. He has the skills to jump on the air. He's got the skills to help edit anything that needs to get done. So my confidence level went from a, we're not going to survive minus grande 
to we can actually pull this off and we can do right. this. Well, let me say two things. One, Browner already does everything I do on a much smaller scale for Bert and for the Browner and Bert show. Mm -hmm. So, hey, I was never tripping about that. May not look exactly the same next week, but we'll figure that out. Secondly, even if I was here next Friday, you would still be stressed out. Yeah, yep. that's true. That's true. So, yep. yeah. that's true. And I would add, not to the stress, because I you'll never see me freak out, but like I, there's not much I could do if it doesn't work at Delmar. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, even if I was here, like, if, <laughs> if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Yeah. I mean, yeah. dude, we were on radio station, and sometimes it didn't work, right. and there's nothing I could no. do. So. I know. I was actually, last night, I was thinking to myself, you know, we've had Dato on from his office in Del Mar, and it's worked perfectly. Maybe we should just consider bringing all the guests into his office, and maybe I shouldn't even be there, you know? Um, but we're going to try it. And listen, I gotta say this. I have total faith in Browner at the very end, at the very least, yeah. you yourself go into Dato's office and do your portion yeah. from Dato's yeah. office. I mean, I have faith in Browner because, because here's the one thing about Browner. When he said, we're going to broadcast live on the yacht America cruising around the Bay of San Diego, I thought that's going to be really difficult. And Alex, you said never happening, not going to happen. Well, Browner proved us all wrong and he got it done. So I think between I still don't know how it happened. I still don't like knowing what we know now about what we what we do here. I still don't know how it worked. I really do not get how it worked. And sometimes we have trouble when we're plugged in at home. Makes no sense to me. Wow. Browner put some some freaking magic on that thing. And just like when Friday come, it's going to go off without a hitch. Everything's going to be great. So there's nothing to worry about, old man. Well, the beautiful because. thing about Friday's show, Scott, is, you know, little backdoor secret here. It's not a full length show. So we have plenty of time to have a hiccup here and there and still get on air. Yep. I told Browner there's three things that need to happen. And you tell me your priority. Got to be on YouTube at three. Mm -hmm. You got to be on radio at three. And you got to be on TV by seven. Everything else is extra. Everything else is just gravy. Right. That's right. How's Cameron feeling? Just, I don't know if you can move your camera, but how's Cam hey Cam? How you doing, buddy? Good. Good. How, how, are how are you feeling? Are you feeling confident that you can do what Alex does? I'm feeling, I'm feeling great. I mean, just learning from Alex. I don't have much leeway here. Sorry. I'll lean forward then. You yeah, hear, you can hear me. Yeah. Learning from Alex, he's teaching me the rope, so I think I understand it to the highest degree. Um, and I'm editing a sided podcast, so I feel like I can multitask well. So yeah. whatever you guys need. All right, man. I'm here. Well, you know, it's funny. My son is 21 and Cameron's 20. And, you know, Cameron and I have become close. Like, I mean, <laughs> you know, we're, we're tight. And it's like my son's like, damn, dad, you're really close with this kid. I'm like, I love this kid. In fact, let me tell you how much I love this kid. My my uh, he and I went to lunch about a week ago. Right. We get we have kind of a heart to heart discussion uh, about life and stuff. And. And uh, at the end of the day, I actually texted this kid's mother. I texted, <laughs> I texted Cameron's mother and I said to her, I said, listen, I love your son. I adore this kid. Um, and I'll tell you right now, the highest compliment I could possibly give this young man is I asked him, hey, Cameron, why don't you take my daughter out on a date? Whoa. Like, yeah. Yeah. Damn, he started Whoa. blushing. Yeah. Yeah. He started Whoa. blushing. It's true. true. How'd that date go? No, he hasn't gone out on it quite yet. I don't. I thought she had a boyfriend. No, no. This is my younger, my seventeen-year-old. You know. Well, that's. Whoa. It's a little too old, yeah. isn't he? Well, I know. And my yeah. and my daughter was like, "Dad," because I told her, "I go, hey, I go. Don't you think Cameron's a great guy?" And she's like, "Yeah." And I'm like, and, and she's like, "Um, isn't he like 23, 24 years old? Because he's tall. You know, he's like six four. So he's and, definitely uh, five years older than he actually is because he's tall. Well, yeah. no, he just looks. He she thought he looked older. I'm like, no, he's only like nineteen or twenty. He's only. And getting through his first couple of years of college, it's like, oh, really? I'm like, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yesterday, my fiance walked in. She got home a little early. She took a little half day from from work for her B day. She walks in. She goes, oh my god, you guys are so tall. And I was like, all right, time to go, guys. I can't be the short one. In the house. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he not, literally threw I'm us always, out. He threw us out. Yeah, when came I'm, up always, with I'm always the tall one in the friend group. I can't be the short one. All of a sudden, I'm not my. I'm not mentally capable of being the short one. Yep. You two get out. I understand. I do. All right. Hey, listen. Let me turn to Connor McGregor here in just one minute. But before I do, I want to mention our friends at HES Solar. They're right behind me for those of you that are watching. HES Solar's on the back monitor here. And I want to send a shout out to my guy, Spencer Holt. 
at HES Solar. His email address is spencer at hessolar.com. So real easy to get a hold of him. And I just think email is like the easiest thing that you can do right now, um, other than maybe texting. So just email Spencer, spencer at hessolar.com. And here's why you would text or email rather Spencer. If you are a business owner, I'm talking to all you guys that are out there right now listening on the radio, you own a business and perhaps you own a building and you're just getting pounded every month by electric bills. Why are you doing that? I've given this example. I'll keep driving it home. The Brigantine family of restaurants has a corporate headquarters in Miramar. Spencer goes in, in not himself like physically, but he sells to them a solar system for their building. They are now saving $3,000 a month, $36,000 a year. See how fast I did that? Three times 12, $36,000 a year in savings from what they were paying previously to SDG&E. That's significant dollars. And I know that, you know, Brigantine's a big family of restaurants. They've got the Brig, they've got Miguel's, they've got, you know, other brands, Catch and, and others, but 36 grand is real money. It is real dollar. And, and to think you want to spend $36,000 on electric bills, or would you rather take that $36,000 and deploy it elsewhere? Spencer can help your business save money when you're ready to go solar. So email him, spencer at hessolar.com, spencer at hessolar.com. And by the way, I always talk about businesses, but if you are a homeowner and you are ready to go solar at your home, he can help you with that as well. His area of expertise happens to be business, but you can catch him and uh, and he can help you with your home as well. In fact, congratulations to Bill Hagen, the owner of 1090. Bill Hagen, here's our advertisers on the show. He gets his you know what from Toriolistics, and now he gets his solar from HES Solar, Spencer at hessolar.com. Okay, guys, listen, quick story for you about this Conor McGregor fight. I ran into some people the other day. Uh, this was at a 4th of July party, and this couple that I know, they work for Tony Robbins. You guys know the big, you know, business yeah. motivational guy, Tony Robbins, right? So he used to share an office with Yeah, he used yeah, to work he, above us. Yeah, his office and his headquarters were in the same place where the original 1090 studios were in, uh, you know, off of um, Mira Mesa Boulevard. Sorrento, now. Yeah. So, um, so these, this couple that I know, they're like, hey, um, Tony's got this really big conference that he's putting on and it's virtual. And um, it's kind of like the NBA bubble where the fans are on television monitors, you know, and, and he's, they're telling me that Tony has built this facility now in West Palm Beach, Florida, and he'll be kind of in the ring, if you will. And the monitors of the people who are around the world will be around him. And um, they're doing like this giant Zoom uh, conference and people can be involved in the Zoom chat, blah, blah, blah. So they're telling me this story. And they wind up telling me that um, on Saturday, this upcoming Saturday, Tony won't be speaking to the crowd. He's booked a bunch of other speakers for that day. Now, why is this all relevant? Because where is Tony Robbins going to be? Walking out with Conor McGregor? That's the answer. No, really? Yeah, st st true story. Is, is they're like, we, we didn't realize Tony told us, hey, I'm not going to be there Saturday. I'll be there on Friday. And I'll be back on Sunday, but I won't be there on Saturday. Nobody ever asked him like, well, why Tony, where are you going to be on Saturday? You're having this big conference. People from around the world are going, um, they're, they're going to be zooming in virtually. They're spending money with you. Why will you not be there on Saturday? Because Conor McGregor is a Tony Robbins client. And it's one of those things where it's like, he needs a motivational speech before the fight starts. Yes. I, I mean, that, but, but that is the true story that yeah. having this huge conference yet Saturday going to be with Conor McGregor. So Alex, if you yeah. could, as our in-house MMA expert, if you will, um, okay. set us up with what now, Browner, why did you just make that look when I said our in-house MMA expert, why did you make that look? Cause I'm, I'm listening up. No, no. You had a look that said he don't know nothing about no MMA. I'm the MMA expert. Whoa! That's what that look said to me. First of all, I would never say that because I don't know anything about MMA. I oh. literally only know like three people, and they're all women. So I, I'm not really the person to defer to. When he said, when you said that, I perked up because I wanted to hear the knowledge. All right. So here we go, <laughs> Alex. Give us this big look. I'm. I will watch MMA, 
generally I find myself watching MMA when it's already like done and on replays on ESPN or Fox sports or any of these channels. In fact, a few weeks ago, I sent Alex a message like, are you watching this fight, dude? It was an unbelievable fight. I have no idea who the guys were, but (laughs) Saturday night when it's Conor McGregor, that to me has event status and that's the kind of thing that I will buy on paper. That's an interesting thing to say because I was going to ask you guys, is Conor McGregor still that event status? Or has his lack of wins in the past three or four years and his venture into boxing and, and, and whiskey and all this, other, has he just become more of a sideshow than an event? Like, are you really going to like take time out of your Saturday evening to, to watch this fight? Because I feel like four years ago, five years ago, like before he fought Mayweather, I feel like he was much must watch TV. Mm-hmm. Now, as a still as an MMA fan, like a huge MMA fan, I'm all, not all that excited about this fight. Is that because to you, um, he's more, um, he's more hype. He's more show than substance uh, at the moment. Okay, all right, hmm. all right. Um, yeah, you know that, like remember I brought up like Floyd Mayweather and like why I always liked watching Floyd Mayweather is regardless his fights were always not really exciting, but he always backed up his trash talk consistently. Mm-hmm. Obviously, he never lost. Conor McGregor has won once since 2016 in the UFC. Can you put on the screen um, kind of like a uh, a fight log or you know the results of his last few years to, to kind of drive home your point? Yeah. Um, I'll just go to the Wikipedia page. They do a great job of putting their boxing or their fight record. So this is what I'm talking about. When he was fighting Jose Aldo and he was fighting Dustin Poirier the first time, he was much watched. He was knocking everybody out. Then he had that crazy Nate Diaz fight that everybody loved. He lost. Then the Nate Diaz came back and he won. And he beat Eddie Alvarez, becoming the UFC's first ever champ champ, where he was a champion in two weight divisions. Mm -hmm. And then he started going off and he fought Floyd Mayweather. And then he didn't fight again from the UFC. And then he got that crazy fight against Habib. Remember when everybody jumped in the octagon and corners started fighting corners and went crazy then he didn't do anything for two years then he fought donald cerrone and everybody's oh he's back and then against dustin poria he lost again so he's won once in four years in the ufc so against poria who he's going to fight on saturday is he is it a one and one one and one this is a they're completing the Mm trilogies they fought seven years ago at the when mcgregor i would say was rising he he fought poria beat him very handily then earlier this year i believe it was let me just double check that date real quick. Uh, yeah, in January he got knocked out by Poirier. Against Poirier. So they're one and one. Yes, mm-hmm. they're one and one. Yeah. So okay. So what? Do you, what I I would say that I'm inclined to watch on Saturday. Night. I will, I, I'd like to play you a video of McGregor when we come mm-hmm. back because Stephen A. Smith interviewed him. Oh yesterday. God. Yes. Okay. It's very good. All right. Stick around. Um, McGregor's interview with Stephen A. Also, I'd like to, I'd like Burke Grossman's coming up and I'd also like to get into some Otani talk. I want, I want to talk about Otani a little bit today. So everybody hang out with us. It's Kaplan and crew from the seven mile casino studios. All right, everybody. It is a Thursday afternoon here on Kaplan and crew. We are in the seven mile casino studios along with Grande and the Brown man. And um, usually we speak to Burke Grossman on Wednesdays. But today's Thursday, and for whatever reason, we've moved Bert to today. And I see that Bert is in his car, zooming into the show. I'm curious to know what he's got going on. Bert, how are you, man? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. We have, uh, you know, Strike Force has their kids camp this week, so I'm kind of in and out of that down at the Olympic Training Center. Oh, cool! Wait, man. wait, 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 wait! You, you, what, you ain't had a chance now to come down and teach the kids? No, uh, no, you have to get a background check, man. So I didn't think you wanted to do it. That's true. Mm-hmm. You're right about and that. And it goes like two to... generations, so your mom stabbing people ain't going to help you out either, even if you're That's clean. probably true. You're yeah, right. You're right. Uh, the, guy, the guy fell on the knife, by the way. Mm-hmm. What? The well, guy fell on the knife. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> so do don't, do be, don't, don't be going around repeating that other story, okay? He fell. So the, the, the knife was in your mom's hand, but he fell on it? Look, don't worry about how he fell on the knife. Just to he know, according to police reports, that's how the accident occurred, sir. Okay, okay. I know how that goes. All right. Mm-hmm. So he was on top. That'd be missionary. It fell. Got it. 
My bad. Oh wow! Listen, you could wait, 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 wait. Let, let's <laughs> Scott before you even begin. Adults and have then, sex. All right. Perfectly fine. <laughs> Someone saying my mom had sex with her boyfriend doesn't make me weird. I'm an adult man. I'm sexually active. I hope all four of us are sexually active if we're lucky. Today. I'm not. It's not. I got one more I've question. Seen, so, I've seen wait, Tanya. Just, you're more than sexually active, sir. <laughs> was the guy that fell on the knife, was that her boyfriend? Again. At the time, okay, yes. Okay. Currently, no. Oh, oh. oh okay. Okay. I think I got a, I got a visual now. That's my bad. Sorry. She doesn't yeah. date clumsy men that fall on knives. The relationship ended after he fell yeah. on the knife. Right. And for okay. him, he probably was like, you know what? I'm out of this relationship because she just leaves random knives on the floor that I might propped up trip. And then all of a sudden up, yeah. I get stabbed and I got to get out of this relationship. Or oh, yeah, you're a missionary. Who carries a knife around while you're having sex? That's, That's some a Trevor question. Bauer shit right there. That's some Trevor Bauer shit. I'm just telling you. <laughs> yeah. All right. You're going to make us work hard today to edit, aren't you? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know, with the Zoom, I forgot I was being professional. I thought I was just a guest. And you'd be about. Sorry. Go ahead. I do, like I, it. I, I do like it that when you're leaning closer to the to the camera. Um, there you go. I like it. Uh, Bert is rocking today his Padres hat. He's wearing his Strike Force T-shirt. He's looking really dope with his aviator glasses on. And today, Burt Grossman is being brought to us by the Total T Clinic, TotalTClinic.com. Get your testosterone levels checked for free. It'll only take 15 minutes. And if your testosterone levels are low, you get on a treatment of testosterone. I'm telling you right now, you're going to feel great. Your body's going to fight off infection. You're going to be healthy. And more than anything else, I mean, you're going to feel virile in the bedroom. So, guys, make sure you take us up on this advice. 15 minutes is all it'll take. TotalTClinic.com. Book an appointment. Get your testosterone levels checked for free. Bert, we were talking right before you came on, talking about Conor McGregor. Yeah. Got a, got a fight this Saturday night. Yeah. Are you into Conor McGregor? Will you watch on Saturday night? No, no, I'm not. I, I was into younger Conor McGregor, but, you know, there's an old saying, uh, rich men can't fight or won't fight or don't fight. I mean, he doesn't have anything left to fight for. It's just not... He doesn't have that fire anymore. It's just not worth watching anymore to me. And he's older, but I'm just saying it's just you know, ever since he became famous and rich, he's not the same Conor McGregor, understandably, but no, I'm not gonna watch him. Now that's interesting, Alex. We hadn't we hadn't really talked about that until Bert brings it up. Conor McGregor, as he was on his way up, was fighting for fame and fortune. He's now not only achieved fame, but forget about what his earnings have been in the ring or the octagon it's the sale of that whiskey company that's made him you know a multi 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 millionaire conor mcgregor may want to fight because he's a fighter but does he have the passion to win and be a champion burt brings up a very interesting point what do you think alex i think it goes kind of goes along to what i was saying about is he must watch tv i think when you have that fire that passion that the trash talk ability that he possesses um that's the kind of stuff that makes you want to tune into something and his last fight against dustin they were both cordial there was no animosity nothing but respect the ufc has plenty of fighters like that the reason conor mcgregor was a superstar is because he talked his trash he was not shy about being braggy about his money and i think that it, it all goes hand in hand it's like a what you're fighting for but once you get it now you're going to be like respect this respectful fighter. And, and, and now you like love this guy you're fighting. Like the weigh-ins, like they put their arms around each other and we're like, Ooh, but now Connor's trying to sell that there's real animosity again, when there really, there isn't, it's like fake. You know what Connor McGregor should do to Bert's point. He should just do what Floyd Mayweather is doing. Connor McGregor should just fight like Jake Paul, the other Paul. Um, and he should just do celebrity fighting because people will pay to see him beat up dudes that aren't real fighters. And then he doesn't have to well, take that's the what risk he, of getting hurt. That's kind of what he said in this Stephen A interview. He was like, I could play it, but he's like, I was, I wasn't even paying attention to Dustin. I had a fight lined up against Manny Pacquiao. I was, I was getting ready for. Well, let's hear it. Let, so, so Stephen A Smith does an interview with Conor McGregor and Burt Grossman is here on a Thursday afternoon being presented by the total T clinic. And we'll hear about what Burt is doing down at the Olympic training center here in just one minute. But Let's take a listen to what Stephen A. and Connor talked about. 
happened in the octagon in January. You know, there was a lot of free things given. There was there was there was weight on the scales given. There were shots in the octagon given. There was plugs and support given. There's nothing free given this time. Everything is getting took, and that's that's the mindset here. Is that why you lost? Yeah, I would say so. There's a, I mean, there's a few things. I pitied the man. To be honest with you, I wasn't. I was looking past him. I had a Manny Pacquiao camp in place. Last question, win by KO or just the win? Saturday night. KO, out on a stretcher. This man is gone. Okay, you know, first of all, um, I got to just say something about ESPN. Guys, honestly, the, music, the music in the background, here. it's just so irritating. It's so annoying. And I'll say another thing real quick. You know what Stephen A looks like in these interviews? He looks like a guy that's hired by the World Wrestling Federation to let's use your uh, quote unquote sports credibility to have you in a staged um, scripted interview with one of our wrestlers, you know, like Arash Markazi, who's on 1090 at noon, Arash grew up a, a huge wrestling fan and has now worked his way into the WWE. And they, they call him like sports journalist, Arash Markazi. And Arash knows that he, he's in on the act and he's sitting there interviewing these pro wrestlers, but it's fun and it's funny. Stephen A, is it me or does he look like he's interviewing a pro wrestler? I, the whole thing, the, the whole thing looks overly produced for uh, like the, the loud music, the backdrop, like, that doesn't feel like Stephen A to me. Like, I know he does boxing, so I guess they just make him do MMA. He makes so much money, they just make him do everything. But I, I, I just look at that and I go, I, I'm good. I you guys, that doesn't drive me to watch the fight. We had this whole conversation about pregame, postgame coverage with Rachel, Nich Rachel Nichols, Maria Taylor, all this stuff, like Malika Andrews. Like, does anybody watch pre-fight coverage because Stephen A's on there? Does anybody watch post fight coverage? Cause Stephen A's on there because it, it would make me turn it off. Like why is Stephen A on my fight coverage? I watch, I watch post fight coverage stuff because that I know I'm Mr. No press conference, but that's where you get probably some of the most quotable raw material from the guys being in the ring at that moment after it just happened. I think that's my favorite sporting event to do post fight or post game uh, commentary because guys are so raw, but these guys also talk so much trash. It's great to be like, yeah, I knocked him out. He's terrible. Look at him. He's on the ground. Like the one time uh, I think it was, who's that old man who told Floyd Mayweather, uh, you cheap years shot years at the guy. I keep, I keep your ass. Larry Larry Merchant. Merchant. Yeah. I love that guy. That whole thing was fantastic. Like that was great for me. I, but that, that's the only, you can only get that in that sport. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I don't know. What do you think? Are you back? Yeah, I'm back. Sorry. Um, my phone overheated. I got an Android flip phone. And for some reason, it overheated because I had it on my dash. I don't know why. How about, how, about you be, how about you be professional and just go to a place where, I don't know, there's a computer? Oh, no, nah, because you know I can't sign on without Tanya. <laughs> oh, that's right. I, I can barely get on this right. phone and keep it going. It's overheated. Yeah. I don't, like I said, you know, you know everything. I go by um, the Rocky series. You remember when Rocky got all that fame and he wasn't training for Mr. T and then got demolished? It's the same thing. If you need any life you lesson, sport have... lesson, you go to one of the eight Rockies. You cannot keep going back to Rocky for every fight thing. <laughs> every fight thing is not a Rocky movie. Uh, I don't know. There's been enough Rocky, Rocky movies. movies. You can yeah. find something on that. I mean, Browner, why are you criticizing Burt's uh, perspective? His perspective is based on Rocky movies. What's the problem? Because he, listen, no, he does that That's with everything. Right. Wait, no, why? Because Rocky was a white champ and he can't handle it. Because he beat Apollo Creed. He beat Apollo Creed. He beat Russians. He beat Clubber <laughs> Lang. Clubber Lang. You name it, man. He beat everybody. Yeah. Champ. You know that uh, earlier today, Browner accused me not of racism, Bert, oh. but but of wineism. Wow, what's wineism? Well, that's when. Hey, let me ask you a question. Hold on, Bert. Bert, what kind of wine do you think Scott drink? Uh, he drinks rosé without a doubt. Hmm. Rosé all day. Are you interesting. <laughs> no, I, 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 pr I prefer Chardonnay. No, no, call uh, it what it uh, is. Okay. I prefer yeah. white wine. That's there it. you go. Um, I was going to say that, but I gave you some <laughs> degree of respect that moved you up to rosé. <laughs> I have never seen a dude drink. No, I know one of the dudes drinks white wine. Wow. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. But no, he's not. It's not necessarily that it's white wine, Bert. It's that it's white Chardonnay. wine. No, no, right. Uh, it's not right. Not, like, not black uh, you wine. Drink, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, so Browner thinks. Is, the, uh, yeah, but what's black wine? Mad Dog 2020? Well, no, just color black. Any, he has he wants no color in his wine. He doesn't want any dark wines. He wants white uh, wine only. Yeah. Uh, so therefore, I'm a winist. Mm hmm. Are you shocked I by that, Bert? I kind of agree with Browner on that one. <laughs> mm -hmm. if, if you're drinking white wine, no, no, you are. Uh, what is it? Wineism? Yeah. <laughs> no, you're wineism. You're a bitch. A winist. Too. <laughs> yeah, yeah wineist and a bitch. No, really? Because I drink. I prefer white wine. That makes a guy a bitch. Yeah. There's no. Oh. What man do you? Uh, you ever see James Bond pull up to the bar and order a frickin' Chardonnay? No. You see the mobsters order a Chardonnay. You see any movie where the dude's a straight assassin killer? A man order Chardonnay. Yes, one movie. You ready? Oh God, what? John Rocky Wood. Four. <laughs> what? Yeah, hey, don't you remember? Right? No. What are you talking? Who? Do you remember when Rocky was like, "Yo, uh, Adrian, can I get a glass of Chardonnay?" <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Rodney Dangerfield is in Rocky Four. <laughs> uh, Rodney Dangerfield didn't even drink oh, Chardonnay in school days. Or Caddy, even Judge Schmales didn't drink in Caddyshack. Is right. it's Chardonnay? Is Chardonnay a more manly wine than uh, Riesling? I don't think it it's like Asti Spumanti. It's raised like with that. No, man. All right. You can at least say you're pairing it with something, but you're like Asti Spumanti. No, or no, you're like, you're like a White Claw. Same thing. White Claw. It's lower than White Claw. I, think I don't bad. drink White Claws. I drink Black Claws. How about that, Browner? <laughs> wow. I like that. I like you that. What, what if it's doing? White Claw but Black Cherry? Ooh. I think I'd accept that. <laughs> I'd accept a black cherry white claw. So that, that's, that's an interracial half. relationship. Yeah. yeah that, that, that's an interracial drink. Yeah. All right. Burke Grossman is here, the former Charger first round draft choice and the all time leading white sack man in Charger history. Yeah. Why Burke you got to be white, Grossman? though? Well, because that's, that's the way the stats actually line No, but in. I'm saying, yeah. Connor, why he got to be white, though, man? Listen, that's the way he told me to repeat it. Okay, I'm that's how he wanted to be. For I had to say because there's like eight brothers ahead of me, I wouldn't be the leading guy. I couldn't say top ten. Yeah, and then now you have to yeah, say, and now you have to say San Diego Charger. Or did yeah, Joey pass right. you I, yet? I think he did last year, but that's okay. I just go to San Diego. I'm cool with that. He yeah, LA Charger. He is the San Diego Chargers all-time leading white sack man. Burt Grossman is here on a Thursday afternoon. He's in his car. He's at the Olympic Training Center in Chula Vista. And, Burt, explain to us what you got going on down there. Uh, Strike Force has, like, a couple weekly camps for kids, um, you know, like 8 to 18. Or not 8 to 18, 8 to, like, 16. So there's, like, 60 kids down here now. It's just a day camp pretty much. So I don't really do much. I just show up and look around and then leave. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm not really signed anything, but I'm just down here for that. Yeah. And, and who is like coaching or counseling all these young football players? Uh, some of the local players that are in town that didn't resign with other teams decided to stay and wait the year. Mm -hmm. And are they, are, are they, are they coaching just general football or are they coaching like how to play the game in the arena? No, it's yeah. Well, we use a different football and a different, thing but yeah it's kind of football in general it's not really we don't do the arena rules we use the arena ball during it but we don't use the arena um field size or anything like that gotcha and how do you guys uh wind up connecting to um and i, I don't maybe it's available to everybody but like the olympic training center to, to book that out and use their facilities and that's pretty cool yeah we're actually that's where we're practicing this year and we're keeping all our players at the olympic training center for the full four months so they have they have apartments down there. They have hotels. They have everything. They have a you know cafeteria, three meals a day. So the players are going to practice there, meet there, live there, eat there. So it's it's part of that deal. Wow, that is that is really great. You know, um, yeah, it's a cool spot. Really cool spot. Yeah, I mean the the fact that you don't have to get all these players' apartments, put them in different parts of San Diego, figure out you know where you're practicing or how often you can get into the arena, and to have them all in like you say dorms, apartments. Um, have cafeteria. I mean, for four months, it's like, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to live down here. I'm going to practice here. I'll do film study down here. Meetings. Uh, that sounds really cool. That's, that's a great hey, idea. Man. How does that affect chain snatches signing bonus? I'm going to tell you how it affects 
or an extra signing bonus. The only the only thing that's different there than every other arena, um, because it's the elite athlete training center, you have to get drug tested down there like once a month. So you can't do edibles, you can't do nothing, and you know, you know, players like their edibles and their smoke. So I don't know how that's going to work out. So I might be back to not winning a game this year. Right. Wait, let me just understand this. You're telling me that because you guys are using the Olympic Training Center and because the yeah. guys are going to be living on campus, that the... You have to go with their rules. Wait, so you mean to tell me that, that the USOC, the Olympic Committee, will do the drug testing for you guys? That I don't know, um, to be honest with you. But I know we have to do it, whether it's us or them or an outside uh, you know, agency that we both agree on, but we have to do it. That was part of the, the deal. Do, does yeah. a strike force have to pay? Because usually drug testing is expensive. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I don't get involved in that stuff. All right, all right. Bert Grossman is here, being brought to us by the Total T Clinic. He's in his car. He's at the Olympic Training Center in Chula Vista. Hey, Bert. Earlier this week, we were talking about the Aaron Rodgers Tom Brady golf match. Did you catch any of that? No, I just saw him catching. You know, playing a catch on the on the golf trail. That was it. I didn't even watch it. I don't watch yeah. golf, man. It's still better yeah. than that. Well, I mean, it was a Tuesday afternoon, middle of the day, on a on a television channel that you might have had a hard time finding. I found it yeah. on True TV. But here's what I want to ask you: they they kept pounding away at Aaron Rodgers. Tell us something. You know what's going to happen. And um, the one thing that Aaron Rodgers had in his back pocket was he could have opted out of playing this season because of COVID stuff. He did not do that. In fact, no NFL player this year has opted out. Unlike last year, remember, there were like eight to 10 Patriots that didn't play. Yeah. I'm now of the opinion that Aaron Rodgers will play for the Green Bay Packers. He'll be there week one. He'll be the starting quarterback. And frankly, I actually think he'll make it through the entire season as the Packers quarterback. So that's my opinion. I'm just curious. What do you think? Um, now that you're hearing Rodgers talk and he's being coy, he's still not saying anything. I just think he's holding the organization hostage because he doesn't like the front office, but I still think he'll go back and play. I still think he'll be the Packers quarterback. Bert, what do you think? I don't know. I mean, you'd think that, but I mean, he's a, he's a smart dude. I mean, he's just, why can't that just be a smoke stream so people think he is coming back or, or or anything else. I don't believe everything he says. I mean, that, that just could be his smoke screen for, you know, whatever reason, but, I, I mean, I guess we'll find out. It's all going to come to the end in a couple of weeks, so we'll all find out. But I still don't see him going back. I don't think he wants to. And, and I don't know the COVID rule, but if you opt out for COVID, does that freeze your contract and you're just sitting out a year and you're in the same position you're in now and starts back up again? Or, yep. or does that count as a year on your deal? No. Pauses. It pauses, yeah. So what's the point of sitting out for COVID? You're just going to be a year older and in the exact same position you're at now trying to get out. Well, I think that it, that the thought would be that a year later, when they've already got a new quarterback installed, that by the time he's ready to come back, he's a year older. We've got a new quarterback. Let's move on. Now let's move him. What if that quarter, that new quarterback's absolutely horrible? What if everybody says, well, now Aaron Rodgers is 39. He hasn't played in years. He's still worth the MVP. Is he still that hot number that he was six months ago? Because now it's a year and six months. That's, I think, the point that he would, that at that point, the, the Packers would say, you know what? Yeah, this guy wasn't great in his first year starting, but this guy's been away from football for a year, plus he's a year older. So, listen, we don't have any use for this guy anymore. Let's get rid of him. I don't know. I, I This is why I'm saying as complicated as this story has become in the offseason, I just think Aaron Rodgers going back. What do you guys think? Browner? Alex, what do you guys think? Well, I, I told you I hope he doesn't, but if he does, uh, this, he he will look bad. I think Aaron he lost a, he lost the tug of war. With the, with, the, with the front office, he wanted people fired. They didn't fire anybody. I mean, he could. They wanted him to get more. He wanted to get more talent. And they didn't really get the talent that he was probably looking for. So he didn't show up. And he looks like a fool at this point because now he looks a big baby who stomped and didn't get what he wanted. So I, if he retired, I wouldn't be shocked. I mean, I know he wants to play football. And I know he wants that money. But the way he's going around out here acting, that it's just about peace of mind and mental health. I wouldn't be surprised at all if he retired. See, here's my problem with you now, Browner. I can't reference everything to Rocky, but all your answers reference back to what's best for the Bears. That's one reason you say that, because he's in the same division as you. But I can't say Rocky, but you can base every football decision on what's best for the Bears. Yes. 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 And, and the Chargers. Yes. 
Yeah, and yeah. his team, okay. the Chargers. That's L.A. Brown for you. Burt Grossman <laughs> stopping by, being presented by the Total T Clinic, TotalTClinic.com. Burt, I know you're out there at the camp. You're working with the kids, kind of, sort of. You're in your car. We will talk to you next week, Burt Grossman. Have a great day. I'll make sure I'm professionally set up next week. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Shout out to Paddock. Oh, gosh. Wow. Gosh. wow. Sorry, Shout out sorry, to Paddock. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs>All right, great friends. It is a Thursday afternoon here on Kaplan and Crew, and uh, along with Grande and the Brown Man, we got a lot more we still want to get into, including the Tory Holistics highlight of the day, man. I say I want to talk about Otani a little bit. We haven't really gotten too deep into this. It's gotten to the point now where Otani is is so interesting and I think exciting that I, I I'm going to follow the lead of a longtime great friend, uh, great friends, Don and Lori Benson who are uh, folks who've been around the show forever, live up in the La Costa area. But these guys, they love the Angels. So they take the train and they head north, whereas a lot of people obviously take the train or get in their car and they head south to Petco Park. These guys go to Angels games. I haven't been to an Angels game in many years, and I've never seen Otani play in person. And you know what? I, I think we have one of the most exciting stories in baseball in our backyard. And none of us ever really consider like, hey, why don't I just jump on the train, get off at Angel Stadium, go have a good time, check it out. I'm going to do that. Would you guys ever do that? Would you go to an Angels game? And do what? Look at that fraud Mike Trout. I don't think so. What is your thing with Mike Trout? Fraud Mike Trout. What does that mean? What is your thing with Mike Trout? Yeah, why do you have such a hard on for the guy? Whoa. Whoa. No. You do. I wouldn't describe it as that. Not a fan. Can not I not a be a fan? Of what? Mike Trout, but not a fan of what? Like, like you're, why like, though? You're you're a, you're a hater on Mike Trout. I'm just curious why. What? What does that look? I, listen, listen not I'm a not hater? a hater. Listen, if I call why, a listen, why oh, a person got to be a hater? Comes. Why a person got to be a hater if they don't like some? No, Can no, I well, simply you, just like not like certain type of ice cream? Am I a hater of that ice cream? Yeah, yeah, but, no. but, but, but not liking the players is, is is one thing. Calling him a fraud is something else. I mean, the stats say what they say. Why is he a fraud? Again, y'all can keep on drinking the Mike Trout Kool-Aid all y'all want. I am not a fan. Okay. You don't have to be a fan. But why is he a fraud? That you won't answer the question. I got my reasons. What are they? I got my Just reasons. One. List one reason. Well, clearly he is a fraud because after what happened, after my research in this Tyler Skagg situation where the family is suing, some more reports that I read about Mike Trout that I overlooked or just for whatever reason, gloss past at the time it happened. I just think Mike Trout is a fraud. I have no idea what you're talking no about. No idea what That's you're what I'm saying. About. It would take too long to explain. The blog is coming out, I think, today, later today. So there, there, uh, there's no need for me to explain it in detail on the show because you would get lost in the weeds of it. So I, so I wrote about if it. You're, you're posting a blog about mm -hmm. Mike Trout being a fraud? About Mike Trout's involvement or lack of uh, in, the, in the Tyler Skaggs uh, overdose. I, I listen. I will look forward to reading your blog. Thank you. I appreciate right. that. And then, and then if, you, you should post a sided question in there, which should be: Is Mike Trout a fraud? Or maybe as you make I a always statement. do. Maybe you make a statement: Mike Trout is a fraud. Agree or disagree? We'll find out. Okay. Is are you saying are you not a fan of Mike Trout because Trout is not a black fish? Again, my personal reasons for not being a fan of any trout. Because trout is more of like a yellow, greenish, you know, mm -hmm. not white. It's not really a white fish. There's a lot of fans. There's a lot of reasons why I'm not a fan of trout. Okay. If, if trout, as mm -hmm. he stands today, mm -hmm. if he were black, everything is the same. Everything. Got all the statistics. Um, doesn't have the wins to go with them. Everything that you're fetching about now related to the Tyler Skaggs situation. If everything were the same, but Mike Trout were black. Would you still call him a fraud? And I also like my superstars to want to be superstars. I like the best player in the game to represent the I like all those things about the best players. Like, I mean, I like I may not like LeBron James because he's great on the court and he beats my team, but LeBron James is a great representation, representer rather, of basketball. Mike Trout is not that of baseball. There's another problem I have with Mike Trout. You're the best player, you were the best player in the game 
for five years straight. You didn't want to be in any commercials. You didn't want to participate in any inner city things to get youth people playing in baseball. You did none of that. You just did Mike Trout stuff. You were great at baseball and you went home. So oh, I, I don't boy, like that man. from my, my superstars. My God, if, if, if Mike Trout doesn't go into the inner city and help with, with inner city youth to be more active in baseball, oh my God, what a terrible guy he is. I just want to focus on being a great baseball player and that's my life and that's what I'm about. But man, if I don't go to the inner city and, and help the underserved communities become more baseball intensive, what a horrible guy I must be. I didn't listen. That's this is my opinion of Mike Trout. Yeah, you can, you can, you can come into America, throw roses at him all you want. I re, that's, that's you, baby. That's me. I'm feeling that's you. me. I'm feeling you. All right. All right. Well, you still it, really good at, yeah, he's he's really good, and and you know the stats tell you that he's tremendous. But I'll tell you this, he's I think wrong. I'll tell you this, <laughs> we have. I will go with you, Scott, to two games. Okay, we can make it a weekend trip. Okay, August twenty seventh and August twenty eighth. Okay, because that's when they play the Padres in Anaheim. Okay, I love it. Or they just wait for them to come to us. Tuesday, no. September seventh, and Wednesday, September eighth. No, actually, I'd like to go to. I'd like to go there. I'd like to go to Angel Stadium. I've been Angel Stadium in a really long time, and I think that um, if we picked up the train, like for me, I'll take the train right here in Solana Beach. Take the train, get off in Anaheim. You get off right in the parking lot. You walk right there. Um, it, it's a good time. I haven't done it in, in many years, and I'd love to do it again. You gonna wear your uh, Dodger blue or your Angel red to the game? Well, why why would I wear Dodger blue when you know it's not a Dodger you game? You gotta represent your team. And I don't I don't really have any Dodger gear. Well, you have the LA Kaplan shirt. That's true. Yeah, I mean, so I also, you do technically. Maybe I'll just wear my swag chain t shirt. Why? You're not a Padre. I'm not what? You're not a Padres fan. Why would you do that? Oh, I, I you must have missed me. So you got Brown are all defensive now. I know, I know. Now How he's, you got Brown now, all he's defensive. Now, now he's now he's doing the Trump thing to me. He's going he's going on the right. attack. He's right. going now on the attack. I'm not, de- after him. I'm not defensive. How am I defensive? I don't listen to yourself. <laughs> I'm not defensive at all. Mm. I've explained my I've explained my reasonings, okay? What what you want to do is your business, okay? We both know you LA Cap. So you gotta go and rep your team. That's all I'm asking. I just ask a simple question of what colors will you be wearing when you go to the game? I don't know. I was I was seen just the other day at a Padres game rocking that swag chain T-shirt. I know Padilla going to wear his flake of purple. So uh-huh. I'm just asking questions. I don't have to ask him. I need to ask you. Yeah. Well, Are you hey, going to wear your L.A. Clipper gear? Or, or I, better I, yet. Yo, shout out. Your L.A. Charger gear? Yeah, you're going to rock shout some out, powder blue? Shout out to Bill Hagen, okay? Shout out to Bill Hagen for sending me the Clipper shirt. So I might wear that if I go. But y'all, I already told y'all. I'm not in the bag. I'm not in the bag with frauds. Yeah, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna get Browner a uh, a Charger powder blue T-shirt for this year, so he can rep his Chargers because he's L.A. Brown. Nah, I just holler at my dog Dean. What you mean? Oh, really? Yeah, hey, holler at your dog. Right. Holler at my dog Dean. Hey, speaking mm-hmm. of hollering at dogs, let me uh, let me say this. <laughs> it, I think we all as Padre fans, again, I don't think enough of us pay attention to how close Otani is and how exciting the season is that he's putting together and how easy it would be to jump on a train or just get in your car and go check out the Angels. And, you know, I I always um, think like, okay, you're a Padres fan, but if you like or if you want to like an American League team, here are the Angels. You know, again, if think about it like this. If you lived in Carlsbad, to get to Petco Park versus getting to Angel Stadium, it's it's one or the other. You know, it's it's 45 minutes to downtown San Diego, maybe 35, no traffic. And it's 40 minutes, 45 minutes to get up to Angel Stadium again, assuming there's no traffic. So if you're in that Carlsbad, Oceanside, Vista, real North County, San Diego, not that difficult, you know. But our natural inclination is to go to Petco and the Padres, not to go up to the Angels. What Otani is doing with the Angels is something that I think if you're just a baseball fan, you got to at least be paying attention. If you're just a sports fan, not even necessarily a pure baseball fan, you you have to find this story to be somewhat interesting. But the fact that it's so close and it's so touchable is something that, you know, again, Anaheim might as well be San Francisco. Anaheim might as well be Miami. We don't go there to go to baseball games. And we also probably forget this because Padre fans love Matt Vaskersian, who was, you know, at one time the voice of the Padres. He's now the voice 
of the Angels. So when Otani is hitting these bomb home runs, it's Matt Vasgersian's voice. You, do you call him L.A. Matt? No, no, no. Matt Vasgersian is a businessman. He's going where the business. He's going where the money takes him. I ain't got no problem with that. Okay, you should, maybe you should call him O.C. Like Matt. Me. Yeah. Hey, what's wrong with that? All right. Well, here, listen. Take a listen to this. Otani. There are people that are starting to like project out how many home runs Otani is going to hit this year. Could Otani break one of these, you know, long-standing records? What, what was Barry Bonds' final number? Was it 72? 74. 74? I don't know if Otani's going to get there, out. but uh um, I thought it was 73. Ain't nobody ever breaking that. Well, 73. Yep. Uh, listen, greatest I mean, baseball player ever. Oh, Fraud. Goodness. What are you doing? What are you, wait, wait. <laughs> what you doing, man? Don't do that. Oh, really? Don't do that. What? What? Don't do what? Don't do that. Don't do Uncle Barry like that. Don't call uh don't do Uncle person Barry like that. that that only got those numbers because he cheated a fraud. Come on, bro. Don't do Uncle Barry like that. No, you do Uncle Mike like that. Okay. You do Uncle Trout yep. like that. Only you're don't... allowed to do ridiculous yeah. things like yeah. that. Come on, Browner. Do better, man. Do better. No, hey, listen, man. Don't do Uncle Barry like that. <laughs> All right, take a listen to this. This is Otani yesterday. What, what number was this? Was this 31? 32. 32. Take a listen. This is Otani's home run with Vaskersian on the call. The next 2 2 home. Oh, he's going to get the jog around the bases. He did it again. He's a beast. <laughs> Look at that crowd. Dead. Look at him empty speeds. It's a Wednesday afternoon in the middle of the day when a lot of people are like working and have lives. Yeah, I don't I don't know if I'd call it dead. I mean, it sounds like a pretty nice sounding crowd to me. You know what? You said something. The Angels that... are uh, 44 and 42, by the way, working their way up the American League West. You said something interesting about should the Padre fans uh, uh, find their way up to Anaheim. And I, you know what's funny about that? This team has been, this city has been waiting to be on fire about this team for so long. I don't think they even have enough attention in their bandwidth for anyone else. Probably not. And and why would they? I mean, it's not like Angel right. fans are like, hey, you know what? I saw uh, Fernando Tatis jump up to catch a ball and then elevate Double jump. even more. So, you know what? I think um, that Tatis is such an interesting and great and exciting player. Let me go from Anaheim or Irvine or someplace up in Orange County, and let me schlep down to Petco Park. By the way, they make it super easy. I can take the train, jump on the trolley. I can get off right at Petco Park. I don't think anybody in Anaheim thinks about coming to San Diego. And frankly, I don't think about anybody in San Diego contemplates going up to Anaheim unless you're from that way, unless you grew up an Angels fan, or maybe you live up in, in North County. I mean, maybe you live up in Oceanside, and you're like, it's just easy. It's just easy to, to, to get right up the freeway. But the Otani story... And the fact, you know, remember there was that time where it was like Vladimir Guerrero Jr., Tatis, and Otani, and they were all kind of tied with home runs. And what we were looking at was look how impressive it is that what Tatis is doing because Tatis has played in, call it 20 fewer games, mm -hmm. right? Now, 11 now. Otani, I mean, it's like every game you, you're just waiting for him to do something spectacular. And Vaskersian, by the way, you know, when he calls Sunday night baseball on, on ESPN, that's like two teams that he is just there to call the game. Now he's getting emotionally involved here with the Angels, like he used to be with the Padres. When when Vasgersian used to call Padre games back in the old days, there was a sign in right center field at Petco Park that said Cox, C O X, the, the the company that you know we're on your view Cox Channel Four. And I used to say on the air all the time, I want Cox, I can't get Cox. <laughs> because that's where that's where the Padres played, and the cable system I was on at the time was Tom, Time Warner, you know. And so I would say on the radio all the time, "I want Cox, I can't get Cox." When somebody would hit a home run over the Cox sign at Petco Park, Vaskersian's home run calls would be Scott Kaplan wants Cox, he can't get Cox. <laughs> Th these would happen. This is back when the Padres were so bad, nobody cared what he was saying. <laughs> you know, nice. <laughs> So I, I'm into the Otani story. I'm following it, and I actually want to go touch it and see it. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, you were right, though. Uh, until yesterday, I think I read something where his last seven hits were all home runs. So he hit, he had seven hits, and they were all home runs. Until yesterday, then he got a, another hit that wasn't a home run. That's incredible. That's crazy. It is. I mean, to think that this guy would come here and be this great especially after year one, having to have Tommy John surgery to get to a point where he can now 
be a, a pitcher in the all-star game and a position player hitter in the all-star game. Here's my thought on this. And then we'll get to the highlight of the day. I think that if you were to say to the average, like high school baseball team, who's the best player on your team? Most of these teams would be like him, the shortstop, the shortstop's the best player. He, that, he plays the most athletic position. He's our best hitter. And you know what? He can pitch too. And he's really a good pitcher. But then what happens is these guys, they get drafted or they go to college and they become specialized. He's a pitcher only. He's a position player only, et cetera. I think Otani opens the door for talented guys who play a position and pitch and are hitters to eventually, I think there will be more Otanis is what I'm getting at. And I'm not saying that they're all going to be coming from other parts of the world. I'm saying that they're kids that are homegrown here that, that do this now in high school ball and in travel ball, but become specialists once they're done. I think there will be more Otanis in the future. Does anybody, anybody buy that? I don't see why there wouldn't be if they're allowed to. I feel like it's more allowed to in other other leagues, other parts of the country, because you're so specialized here. At what point do you stop being specialized in I, college I, baseball? As soon yeah. as you're drafted, I, I don't. I don't think we're going to do that because the, the coaches and these AAU people won't make any money off special uh, ending specialization. That's how they get paid. That's how these coaches you know what? make their money. Scott, I hope that there isn't a big wave of next Otani's because that makes this one special. You know what I mean? Like, like the fact that we get just this one guy that we're living through this moment, like to just have this one random outlier of a guy that can hit 32 home runs before the all-star break. And then he has a two, two, five ERA as well. I, I, I don't see a lot of other players having that ability just in general, but I really don't hope it happens. You know, it's interesting. I, uh, the major league baseball draft is coming up in like a little bit less than a month. There's a kid I know, um, here in San Diego, who's going to be likely a first round draft choice. He is the shortstop of the baseball team. He's the best hitter on the baseball team, the high school team, and he's their best pitcher. And a lot of these teams are telling him that they're going to draft him as a pitcher. And this kid is telling him, don't, I want to be a position player and I want to hit. And they're like, yeah, but you're such a good pitcher and you've got, you're tall and you got, you know, you got great velocity and, and everything else. We want you to be a pitcher. And he's like, I want to be a position player. And I'm just looking at this guy and I'm saying there are probably a ton of kids like that, you know, that are, that are position players, but the coach says, Hey, we need you to pitch. And they're probably the best pitcher too. But so. you, but you have to also want it. He clearly wanted this from the very beginning, from his inception into major league baseball. That was his number one thing. And I'm going to do both. If you're going to be a part of what I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just think there'll be more, um, but Alex, you bring up a good point. Like this is a special thing that we're watching. You know, he At is a liar. Yeah, he is. All right. It is time right now, everybody, for Grande standing by and he's ready for today's Tory Holistics highlight of the day, man. It's time for the highlight of the day, man. Do you want to get high, man? I'm just really high. Highlight of the day is brought to you by Tory Holistics. Go to kaplanandcrew.com to get 20% off when you use the promo code Kaplan2021 at checkout. And you spend a minimum of seventy-five dollars. All right, guys. I'll give. I like to give you guys the option sometimes, so I'll give you guys the option right now. We could talk about a bitter Kyle Shanahan, or we could talk post-game press conference celebrations. Mm. I'm gonna go bitter. Me too. Okay. And also, I'm. I. I don't know if I'm going to Cabo at the perfect time or a little too late because. It seemed like a lot of stuff happened in Cabo back in like the off season when it just finished the Super Bowl because y'all remember Sean McVay and Matt Stafford partying after Stafford got traded to the Rams together in Cabo. True. You know who else was there? Kyle Shanahan. Golden Tate. Oh. Kyle Shanahan was there also <laughs> in Cabo, and he admitted on a podcast with Peter Schrager that the 49ers were super close to trading for Matt Stafford. He thought in so close <laughs> That they told him, go to bed. We're not really going to figure it out till tomorrow morning. Relax. Enjoy yourself in Cabo. Little did whoever told him to do that know that Sean McVay was also in Cabo. And they got Matthew Stafford that night. And then Shanahan was on the podcast, A, with Peter Schrager. And B, Sean McVay was also on the podcast. Check it out. I was trying to get involved in it. Someone who had knowledge on this situation. I remember us talking to condon to everyone to find out when it was happening and i remember saturday i was so stressed out and finally we talked to someone it was like seven at night 
And they're like, no, nothing's happening at the earliest till tomorrow. So you can finish your night. So I'm like, all right, I'm done. Put my phone down. Um, talk to Mandy. I'm like, all right, let's go out to dinner. Let's have some drinks. <laughs> a half an hour later, my buddy calls me. He's like, I'm just telling you, if you want Stafford, you need to get a hold of him right now. Yep. And I'm like, what do you mean? I'm like, no, we just talk to people. Like, I can sleep on this. We'll talk to him tomorrow. I'm just telling you, you need to talk to him right now. And it totally, <laughs> I knew it. And then like 10 minutes later, it was all over. Oh, it, it wasn't it, fun. Hey, if it makes you feel any better, it, it came together faster than I thought too, Kyle. So. <laughs> Well, the fact I was in Cabo, man, like I would have been there and I would have made it really awkward on you two to enjoy it. (laughs) That's pretty cool, though, to uh, have a podcast and get two NFL head coaches on at the same time and and have them tell this story that both of them were in on the player and the one guy got him and the other guy didn't and what his story was. Are we underestimating how good Matt Stafford is because he played with the Lions? Because it seems like every coach in the NFL loves that guy. Yeah, no. every coach loves that guy. Right. Like we so so we are all like, hey, prove it. You you've been good right. statistically, but haven't won. But these coaches, especially a guy like Shanahan's, right. like, you have no idea how underrated they're, this guy is. They're ruining their Cabo vacations to try and get him. It, like they how good is this kid? Yeah. There'll be other Cabo vacations for these guys. <laughs> I'll find him next all week. Right. All right, stick around. Listen, coming up, if you're a 1090 listener, it is time now for the charity stripe. So the charity stripe is coming up on a Thursday night and uh, handing it off to the guys from the charity stripe. But for those of you that are with us on podcast, we'll have a separate ending for you. And we're back tomorrow for Beer Friday. Peace. All right, guys, wrapping things up. It's been a great day. It's been a lot of fun. Talked about a lot of different things, too. Did we talk? I feel like we got to a lot of stuff today. Were you committed to talking about all of it? I don't know if I was committed, but I think I felt it's like I normally got when we it. it's normally when we do it, when you say when you don't say that. Yeah, I'm a Browner. <laughs> Browner is so he's so bitter. So mad. God, Man, what's so up? Mad. How about Gosh, what? OK, uh, you ready? I like Chardonnay. I'm a winist. Mike Trout's got the best stats over the last five years. Oh, my know. God. He's a fraud. I mean, my gosh, man. Bruh, are you Bruh. not a winist? I mean, I will drink red wine on occasion, but I prefer Chardonnay to red wine. Oh, you got one one red wine friend? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. That's a funny. That's very That's funny, bro. Funny one. Uh-huh. That's very You're welcome. Good. Very, very good. That's funny. Don't All make right. him mad, though, because I got to work with him. He's in my home. Oh, that's right. All right. All right. Well, listen, great day today, everybody. You might smash all my white wine in the fridge now. <laughs> Right, listen, my, it, la cre- my la crema. Yeah, is that who you choose to roll with, man. I respect that. You know, it's all good. I'm a beer guy. I don't freaking drink wine. Mm-hmm. I know you are. See all the whiskey over there? Brown life. I'm about that. Brown, I'm about that brown <laughs> life, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. See? Even even when it comes to hard stuff, I like vodka. You know. Oh, see, see, see. Problem, see? Gross. God. Problem. Wow. Yeah. So now you're communist. I guess so. So winist, communist. Well, I don't mm. know if I'm a communist if I drink Tito's. They're they're made in Austin, Texas. No, oh, you so you drink you drink white heart liquor, you drink mm. white wine, mm. and you run a, and you basically run a Trump website. Yeah, they say, man. Oh, what? <laughs> Come Get on, man. Here. Come on, Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, All right let's, let's get go. to work. We're out of here. See you later. <laughs> See you.